Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to The WAN Show. I learned something this week, maybe oh. not this week, but recently. That short bit at the beginning where I'm looking at the camera, that's called a millennial pause. Why? It's really stupid. We'll talk about it later. We've got okay. a lot of great stuff to talk to you guys about this week. The wiggle that killed Tarkov, the video we talked about last week and uh, kind of leaked, has blown up and in the process shattered the Tarkov community. I would say that it has broken it in half, but actually it's in about a million pieces. So we're going to talk about that. What else we got this week? The Olympics of Esports featuring games that you've never heard You're of. You're picking that as a main topic? Yeah, yeah, yep. I actually love this topic. And I'm very excited for it. Oh my gosh. This, this is probably my favorite topic of the whole show. And you only picked one topic, so I don't think you get to talk I this picked week. two. I had the millennial pause. That's a topic? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta reverse that and throw it right back at you. Uh, what else? I don't know. Uh, the, 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 you can buy a car that can repossess itself. I don't know. Oh. Whatever, dude. What? So we yeah, just don't listen. To, don't when listen to anything. They watch four hours. When show dystopia edition. Point. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> the show is brought to you today by Thorum. The Ridge and Zoho One. All right. All right. Let's do the Tarkov topic. The Last wiggle. week, yes. Last week, Luke accidentally on purpose leaked the upcoming video from Goat. You did purpose you did it well i didn't even know how can i leak what i don't know <laughs> luke accidentally on purpose this leaked is not fair the concept <laughs> of a video history <laughs> from creator goat big tarkov creator uh now, who, yeah. who cheated in the game in order to expose cheating the summary is that goat basically went i feel like a lot of people are cheating, but because there's no playback, there's no kill cam, nothing like that, no match replay, I have no way of proving this. So the way to do it could be to cheat myself and see if I can identify other cheaters that way. When he got immersed into the cheater community, he found that there was an old way of identifying friendlies uh, that's not really in use in the game anymore by regular players, but is still in use in, by cheaters, where one goes like that, and the other goes like that to indicate, hey, <laughs> bruh, we're on the same side. Now, the way that it's the, the thing that made it so obvious that it was always cheaters using this wiggle was that people would be doing it from clear across the map with uh, trees and buildings and mountains in between them um, and would be looking like right at each other because some of the cheats yeah. would actually tell you if someone had their crosshair on you. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, so there, there's a bunch of different ones. The one that he used in the video was like one of the easiest ones that you can get and it's been undetected for like years so that's the reason why he went that route so it wasn't super sophisticated but you could see exactly where people were aiming and you could see people through walls you could see what they had in their inventory you could see everything he also figured out after the video that people that have the more advanced cheats um it's all on a separate monitor so it's a separate computer so it's even less detectable so they don't see the uh the wireframe through the wall so it's not really a wall hack in that way, but they have the radar on a side monitor. So they do a different form of wiggle, which he wasn't even doing in the video. So there's probably a higher percentage of hackers, which is where, because they can see where people are aiming, it like draws a line out from everyone's character. They sweep, so they look left and right. So they, they like sweep their aimer line over you. So that that's like, they, they do kind of like a map wiggle instead of a right. leading wiggle. So there's there's probably even more than he thought. The problem with all of this is that the game is so realism focused and cheating changes the dynamic so much that essentially this video has goat has single handedly destroyed Just the community dropped an absolute bomb for this game. I mean, 
I haven't been paying close attention to it. I've seen a little bit of the fallout, but can you kind of catch me up here on what's been going on? Yeah, so first off, I hadn't seen the video before it got released. Right. And he did an interview with me, which I thought he might use maybe 30 seconds to two minutes of. He used the whole thing. Oh, wow. Okay. So, like, the second half of the video is just him and I So, talking. really, you even bringing this up in the first place was pure self-promotion. Apparently, yeah. Uh, Typical. I think that was probably the wrong move. Um, and he has said a bunch of times, like, if he knew it was going to blow up this much, he would have spent more time working on the video, etc. Um, but Yeah, it's is, got, like, one and a half million views yeah, now. Yeah, it's massive. For a Tarkov video, that's, like, unheard of. Um, but that does mean that he's going to have some follow-ups to to try to keep pushing on this topic and he's like had a bunch of people reach out including people from the valorant anti-cheat uh vanguard that have talked to him because <laughs> an interesting thing that we brought up on the last show is that you can't have valorant installed and cheat in tarkov because valorant's vanguard anti-cheat will detect it <laughs> and stop you which is hilarious so people from there have reached out and he's going to have some follow-up videos which should be really good but the immediate aftermath of us like leaking it and then him launching that video uh, was just us leaking us. Yeah, it was actually you um, <laughs> uh, was absolute insanity. First off, people were spam posting it on the Escape from Tarkov Reddit, but that Reddit doesn't allow like cheater POV videos, which kind of makes sense. So they were mass deleting all the posts. But people were like, this is very topical. This isn't like someone advertising cheats. This post should be allowed. So there was this gigantic war. There's a way on Reddit. Uh, I think it's not technically on Reddit. It's an external website. But you can see what posts have been deleted by moderators. Oh. And if you went on I there, I didn't know that, actually. Just, I'm not a big Reddit user. I think it's an... I didn't know either. I think it's an external site. Someone linked it to me. Wonderful community, though. Not toxic at all. <laughs> It was just walls and walls and walls and walls and walls of deleted posts because wow. all these people are trying to force it in and the moderators are trying to force it back and it was just this crazy war. Um, eventually, the way that people found uh, kind of a loophole to make sure that the post could go up there yeah. was they took the clip from the WAN show <laughs> of us talking about it because we didn't have any of the footage. We were just right. talking about the video. So we weren't showing cheats. Yeah. So they, I see. so they posted that, and then the moderators saw that and realized they, they couldn't really remove it, so they just blocked all comments on the post. So they locked the post but <laughs> let it sit there. <laughs> so our WAN show like, clip was top of that Reddit for like quite a while, um, and then eventually it, the, the war just never stopped. People kept posting this video, so eventually they like unblocked the first one that came in and then pinned it, but I think they still locked the comments on it. Yeah, and they had to make like an official announcement about it and everything. I've I have never personally seen a subreddit that on fire ever. Really? Have you hung out in the r slash Linus Tech Tips one? <laughs> yes, actually. Even considering stuff that happens in there, I've never seen a subreddit that on fire. It was crazy. And then immediately after it starts getting spammed on Reddit, people start spamming Tarkov creators that are currently streaming the game the video, trying to get them to watch it. Right. So these people had no primer. They had no warning of, like, what it was. Oh. Just their whole community is like, watch this thing. Watch this thing. Go, 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 And then they go. have to start reacting to it live. And that, it, that was brutal because, like, a lot of these people, especially if they're Tarkov creators, they know there's a lot of cheating in the game. Yeah. But they haven't seen it from a cheater's perspective, and they don't know quite necessarily yeah. how bad it is. They might have a pretty accurate assumption of how bad it is. Yes. But they've never actually, like, seen it, right? Um, so some of the reactions were pretty brutal. A bunch of creators were, like, very negative about the video existing at all um, and very anti-goat at the very beginning. Yeah. And then the community reaction to that was really negative so then the community's like really aggro against all these creators and then some of the creators start kind of flipping back now and here's blah, blah, something blah, blah, blah. here's something i did see my understanding is that there's some kind of of tier of participation within the the tarkov community where people get perks directly from battle state games that are, and I mean, you'll have to correct me if my understanding is is not right here because I'm not super into Tarkov. I've I've only played it a handful of times with like him and Joe, um, but 
my understanding is that on a fairly regular basis, they get like a lot of ammo and equipment. Like like they they get these these packs or these drops that are quite valuable, and that while they aren't a bribe, could potentially put them in a position where they want to retain their their community liaison um, there, so role there is... in order to continue getting perks. So there might be an incentive in the community to kind of sweep under the rug anything that paints Battlestate games in a negative light. Is that is that a, a fair understanding of the situation? So this is only something that I've actually even heard about recently. Because I see. I've never... I just like play Tarkov with Joe. Right. So you've never really engaged in the community yeah, in that way. Yeah. Like I, I, I never, I don't really use Reddit that often. I would never really go on the subreddit. Like I don't really care. I just played the game. Right. But very recently, before this broke, I heard about that system. Yeah. Um, and I do know that some creators have some like very weird levels of insight into what's going on at BSG. Yeah. To the point where there was a post somewhat recently where they were talking about how. Uh, certain creators were like influencing the like dev pipeline directly and like meeting with developers directly, which is like fine, actually, actually quite cool. But it needs to be transparent as well. Yeah. And in some ways it is totally like some of them sure. will say like, oh, I'm a tar. I don't know what they're called because, again, I have never really cared. Yeah. Um, but they're like, oh, I'm a whatever. Sherpas. Sherpas. Sure. Okay, so Sherpas is slightly different. Okay. As far as my understanding goes, Sherpas are supposed to be people who like help other people learn yes. Tarkov. So that's where some of the direct items came from. I yeah. don't know if yeah, the that's other what people... I, that's what I think I was talking about. So I don't know if the Sherpas... Maybe they do. Th I don't know a lot about this. Emissary and Sherpa is what... Emissary is the other one. W22 Brown is saying in Floatplane chat. So Emissary is where they have like direct contact with BSG. Got it. Okay. Sherpa is... I, I don't know what level of contact they have with BSG. Either way. help new players. What we know is that Battlestate Games is in communication with some members of the community and that it's not always clear who is or isn't getting influence over the development process and who is or isn't getting perks. Or, or to what degree. Right. Um, and, and like, it, But there's an incentive, certainly, for some members of the community to um, downplay the impact of this, of this cheating well, and, and keep the gravy train rolling. Maybe even if they're not in contact with BSG and maybe even if they don't receive these... Well, sure. I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of like the way that Apple engages with the press, right? They don't explicitly say, look... You're not allowed to talk about Hackintosh. You're not allowed to criticize this and don't talk about this. But everybody knows and everybody plays the game. You get cut off. Or you, well, it's, it's less that you get cut off and more that you will never get the call in the first place. Apple's engagement in many cases has nothing to do with how many views you're likely to get. I mean, we'll get more views on an iPhone video than 90% of the people they seed an iPhone to. Yeah. It's nothing to do with that. But we're not stylish enough. Well, well yeah. I, in particular, am not cool enough to be the, the kind of, of press outlet that Apple would want to engage with, even if I was super positive about the products, because I have been at times. But I'm also a loose cannon. They know that they can't rely on me yeah. to be nice about it. Um, you might talk about their products while walking in the rain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just might. <laughs> um, so, so I could see it being very much that way, where there's an unspoken... Here's what's okay to talk about. Here's what's okay to emphasize. And these are all no-nos. So, and like, I don't necessarily know that that stuff is happening, but it makes sense that it might be with some sure. of them. Yep. There's also other stuff where like for, for some creators of any kind, realistically, if you are tied to like one thing, like if you are a Tarkov creator and that's yeah. it, if you are a x creator if you are a y creator if you're yeah. tied to one thing and that thing is under attack even with even no, subconsciously yeah with no direct contact with no direct benefit i mean look at what happened to job. look at what happened to ninja when fortnite became yeah. less culturally for, relevant for, just like it's it's like one to one and i'm sure they had communication but even if they didn't if if there was no if there was a complete gap between yeah. ninja and fortnite fortnite going down is going to bother ninja yeah, I whether mean, he knows or not, and it doesn't matter. The name of the person doesn't matter, and the the, the subject doesn't matter. Yeah. If if tech becomes if I'm a tech less YouTuber, relevant, yeah, and I have to it's pivot, it's bad for us. Yeah, and even if it's even if ultimately we survive and we kind of go, okay, we're going all in on channel super fun. 
Um, Yikes. <laughs> it's, it's, that's still a lot of work. That's still a lot of stress. That's still something that and risk and... would be, would be terrifying compared to, oh, I'll just, uh, you know, uh, let's, let's do a uh, laser disc, uh, retrospective. Okay. Yeah. Let's go tech, 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 tech. We should do a laser disc retrospective. Anyway. Uh... So that, that's why like the, the, the creator is almost getting ambushed with this while they were live with no ability to watch it beforehand and collect their thoughts and figure it out, yeah. I think is part of the reason why the initial reaction was so strong. Because it might be subconscious, right? Yeah. They're just like, this sucks. This sucks for a lot of yeah, reasons. And I'm angry. And I'm angry. And, and they should be. And that comes across as hate for the video or hate for GOAT. Sure. When realistically, they're just incredibly frustrated and also live, and maybe it wasn't channeled properly. So now that people have kind of cooled off a little bit, They've had some time to think about it more and stuff. The community is much more... Floatplane chat has given us some interesting stuff here. Uh, Harry009 says, Axel did a poll about the video and 41% of respondents said they were planning to leave Tarkov as a result. Uh, here's one thing I will say to that, though, is if that degree of rampant cheating is making it so you don't want to play Tarkov, I got some bad It'll news for you. For like almost any shooter. Yeah, because just about any game, yeah. probably not any better. Multiplayer. Yeah. Um, I, I think that in Tarkov, cheating tilts the scales the impact is maybe more than, yeah. than some other games. Like if I'm playing a, like a team-based shooter, mm -hmm. um, you know, really good tactics. You could probably take down one cheater, depending on the degree to which they are cheating. Like an aimbot is not enough, you know, in something like an Overwatch. Um, but... It, what does this... On the other end of the spectrum, a, a ability to see through walls without any aimbot or anything in Tarkov is way more than enough. Yes, where yeah, it's, that's it's, true. It's like not enough in Overwatch. Yes. And, and, and like in Team Fortress 2, so what? They can see through walls? Yeah, unless it's like you basically like... know where everyone's going to be anyway. Yeah, unless they can see invisible scouts or unless they have an aimbot, but then usually spies, you can tell if yes. they have an aimbot. Spies, sorry, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, usually you can tell if someone has an aimbot and then you just leave the server, whatever. Like it's exactly it's, it's totally different levels of impact. So that's true. But I I okay, let me let me kind of pitch this question to you. What does this revelation mean for the future of gaming in general? Okay? Multiplayer I, I, is it fair for me to say that it's less fun than it, it was years ago? It feels like it. I don't know if that's because of the type are you, of... Are you getting old? Yeah. Is yeah. gaming changing? Sure. Or is it that rampant cheating is not fun? Because cheating was a thing when we were growing up. Sure. But it was way harder. Yeah. Like now, now he, I believe Goat said five minutes. He Googled it, and then within five minutes, he had it running. Yeah, because you can just you can just pay for it. You can basically it's, it's hire a, a service that will get you up and running. And they have like weekend sales and yeah, all it's it's a full fledged business. It's not like weird sketchy forums anymore. Okay, so multiplayer. <laughs> okay, yeah. single player. I mean, probably the only notable. Okay, I'm I'm trying to think notable single player experiences that have come out for PC in the last little while. Okay, we've got your stray. We've got. It, which must not be named. Yeah. We've got... Other it, which must not be named. There's two of them. Sure, yeah. The other one. <laughs> um, single player has, outside of major blockbuster releases or your odd kind of uh, low budget or, or indie breakout, have been has has just been ravaged by unprofitability because how many years ago was Fallout Four? Yeah, it's been twelve years since the last Elder Scrolls yeah. game. Yeah, and and it's not like it's it's one of those things where we can we can point at it and say, well, it's because of the proliferation of mobile gaming, for example, or like gacha or like pay to win pay to win strategies from game developers. But a big part of that, I think, a lot of game developers are more passionate about creating better more enriching gaming experiences and i think it's pretty obvious that with single player games where there is absolutely no online verification and no incentive to uh to to, to pay for it if you can just play the exact same experience by yourself for nothing uh, i think it's pretty clear that they're more prone to piracy yeah so what's going to be left I don't know. Some people when the dust settles. Elden Ring. Like there's, there's definitely some other yes. games. But it's, oh yeah, that's that was last year though. Come on. It's been a bit. And I don't mean. Okay. I don't mean last year like it was. 
uh, 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 64 days ago or whatever. I mean, that was a long time ago now. I think it was beginning of last year, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Wasn't it genuinely almost a year ago? I think it was February. I think so, yeah. 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 <laughs> Angry Birds. Angry Birds will be the last game standing. Yeah, it's rough. Uh. I, I think my... When this first happened, so on the last show, I brought up wanting a replay system. And I still want a replay system. But... Like in Tarkov, coming yeah, back to Tarkov. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it but helps the at main, least. Yes. Ex so that's... But with Tarkov, the consequences of dying are so much higher that if anything, I would think a replay system would push more people to quit the game, which is probably why they haven't done it. <laughs> in, in, in Team Fortress 2, oh, if you, you if, see the cheaters or if, what? Yeah, if you yeah. see someone who's cheating and obviously their f mouse cursor whipped over to you and they freaking headshot you as you barely come around a corner, obviously you're mad, but it's like... I'm going to switch class. I'm going to sneak up on them. Ah, well, there's, gotcha. there's like We're, certain things Tarkov, that you could do. You could lose a, you know, $100, like real world dollars worth of worth gear of in, in one instance. And it's not like you could get it back. And considering the amount of real money trading going on in Tarkov, that might actually be very true. Exactly. Um, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what the values are. But so there, there's some ideas behind the replay system and how you could get the gear back. One of them is if you replay and watch a cheater kill you and you report them and then that cheater gets banned your gear from that raid could get returned to you okay so th there's some ideas to make it a little bit more amicable my thing that i've more landed on now is i just think people need to care a lot more about anti-cheat and it needs to be more important and the approach that companies take to it need to be more like multi-pronged and i think that's the main reason why i want right a I replay system is so that like we can help like it, it, I, I like the idea of the community being able to have because right now in tarkov and i think i brought this up last week sure. say you're approaching a building and you hear someone inside and then you just randomly die yeah you might think like oh that guy's cheating he shot me through the wall or yeah. whatever maybe it was someone on a hill yeah, 400 meters away that just shot you. You yeah. have no idea. So if you can watch a replay system, it might get rid of a bunch of junk reports of people that aren't cheating. Yeah. So that whatever developer, whether it's BSG or some can other really game, focus on the real problems. Can focus on the real stuff. Yep. So I don't. I don't think it's going to solve the problem. I don't think it's some magic bullet. And I do I think, think it would help them. in Tarkov. Rather than invest, I, I think it actually, obviously, you want to invest a little bit in actual, you know, background process, you know, anti-cheat or whatever else. But because so much of the value of an account is tied up in the items that that account holds, I, I could actually see um, banning players as being extremely effective to reduce cheating if you have the tools like replays that will allow the community to root these people out. Um, I, I think it would help. Like losing, losing hundreds of dollars. And if, they, and if they can figure out a system where they serialize essentially uh, you know, guns and, and other equipment so that they can see the path that it's following and basically just go like, yeah, look, we're gonna get, we're gonna get merciless here. Social credit system. Uh, if, you are, if you are trading with cheaters regularly, you will be banned. So they've actually started doing that. Yeah, apparently they been... said in an AMA they're working on a replay system as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll get to things they've said in AMAs sure. in a second. That's fair. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but, oh, what was I just going to say? Oh, right. They, they have started banning, and this has actually happened to a bunch of content creators, because it's, there's, there's this thing called viewer kits. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you, you enter a raid with nothing on you. So you enter a game with nothing yep. on you and a, you join in with a viewer and the viewer dumps a bunch of stuff for you but you don't know like what it's going to be and then you pick it all up and then usually you kill them and then you have to survive the rest of the raid with whatever, with whatever kit gear they, they you. gave you and usually it's like pretty memey sure like they'll give you like one bullet and like 30 flashbangs or something and you sure. have to like try to figure it out and but sometimes they'll be like really baller kits but you don't know right it's coming in random sure. from a viewer Sometimes the people giving you stuff are people who have cheated or engaged in real money trading or RMT yeah. stuff in the past. And BSG has started banning certain creators that have had that interaction happen because they're trying to ban people that 
play with cheaters or people that interact with other RMT type systems and stuff. And that has gotten really muddy because some of the creators are like, well, this whole viewer kit thing was allowed for like years and dropping things for each other has been fine forever. So like now this is bannable. Right. But then it's, ugh, we're asking them to work on getting rid of cheaters and this is one of the ways to do it. I've even said on WAN show, like people should start, games should start banning people that play with cheaters. Yeah. But then it's an issue with Tarkov because Tarkov has those open lobbies. You've seen them. Yeah. That's and you can just invite play. random people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you can invite random people, they can't have that as a mechanic in the game right, anymore but if you're going to ban people that play with cheaters. Well, it's okay to play with know. them. Just don't take any equipment from them. So that's, But then that needs to be communicated and like... And that's going to be tough. And it's adding... I mean, if there's any community that could probably work around and do the research to figure out this kind of <laughs> arcane bullshit... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably fair enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just... It's, I mean, Tarkov is the gaming equivalent of having like the most tedious job ever, as far as I can tell. <laughs> and we don't even, we just do everything for him and he still <laughs> thinks that. <laughs> it's brutal. It's brutal. Yeah, like, it even just is. the inventory management, okay? <laughs> so you got, look at this, okay? So you got some med pack or something that takes up four inventory squares, and you've got some Cruising. bullet or something that's sitting in one of f otherwise four blank inventory squares. If I take that med pack and I just drop it there, it doesn't just grab the bullet and put it in my hand and leave the med pack so that I can rearrange. It just won't put it down. And I'm sitting here going, literal, actual fucking Diablo 1 had that quality of life mechanic where if you dropped a large item onto a space that only has one item occupying it, it'll just put the other one in your hand. Diablo 1. 1996. Yeah, <laughs> pretty rough. So, okay, so Nikita, or the, I believe, COO and, like, main outward communicator sure. from BSG, the developer behind Tarkov, yeah. um, has started communicating a lot since this happened. Huh. The, f the first reach out was six days ago in a Reddit thread called Hackers, Cheaters, and Other Related Scum of the Earth. Um, and Scum, he, you say. And he posts, Deplorables. He posts a bunch of stuff, which yeah. all sounds really good. Except people noticed immediately that he had made basically the exact same post, not only two years ago, but also three years ago. And they were like borderline identical. Like they're so similar. And right, people so pointed out- on your screen right now or? Uh, I can show the, so, this is the comment that I saw. Yeah, you can show my screen. Okay. This is the comment that I saw from Lisin, L-I-I-S-N, who posts out the two years ago and three years ago threads. And this is the thread from uh, Nikita or Train Fender, I don't know, that, uh, that talks about the things that they're going to do for anti-cheating. Here's the three years ago post, which is like extremely, extremely similar. And here's the, oh, this is part two that he posted. Part two is actually significantly more interesting. And... He has communicated in like an AMA and a bunch of other type of stuff in ways that, that seem pretty good. If they actually do this stuff and it hasn't been enough time for them to really actually do anything, right? Because like it takes time to develop stuff. So I'm not sitting here imagining that they would actually be able to act on a lot of this uh, that quickly. They've tried doing some stuff very reactionary, but it's mostly changing like properties and parameters sure. and different items. Like things that wouldn't take that long because it hasn't been that long. Um, but yeah, reaction to his first post was super negative, but yeah. then he's kept communicating since then and, and refined on things and then it's gotten more positive and the community's just going all over the place. Yeah, Pyro Pinky uh, points out that Battlestate Gades Games needs cheaters to help fund development. Dr. Lupo apparently has a great clip on why it's happening and will keep happening. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very similar, if I, if I had to guess, I haven't actually watched it yet. I haven't even read the comments under it. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say it's very similar to the way that Valve, um, you know, is really doesn't like, you know, cash cash sales of skins and, and everything else, but functionally does nothing to actually stop people from gambling on them and spending money on them. So the, Tarkov... Because without being... cash, it's, it's, it's like anything. Uh, without a cash value, it doesn't have a value. 
There is no actual intrinsic value to any digital item. It has to have a cash value. So as soon as you completely shut down people's ability to trade these items through some kind of marketplace, you destroy the value. Um, now, I don't know if Dr. Lupo makes some other different points about it, but that's that's a very sort of basic overview so, of why it is in a game developer's best interest for people to exchange real world money for skins and in-game items. There's there's no other like financial trading through Tarkov though. There's there's an argument that has been made um, that these cheaters get banned a lot. I believe Nikita made some post saying that they they banned over like 4000 cheaters just over the weekend. Yeah, but is that like that. Well, okay, in a weekend I guess that's a lot. Some things to consider there is they may have made their parameters a little bit more aggressive in response to the video. Sure. So it may have cast a wider net and that may have been a one-time increase. I don't really know. I haven't read all of his posts and all that kind of stuff again. I, I'm not even playing right now. So like my amount of care is not the absolute highest. Sure. Um, but okay. So it really it's, is just about you getting more exposure for yourself in his video. I see. <laughs> <laughs> no one as far as i can tell no one even watched and that that's part. why you it should it. it should not have been in there no, i get it oh my goodness i didn't even know it was in there anyways um okay so there there <laughs> is technically financial reward for them yeah. if the cheaters keep buying accounts that is technically true now there's some questions as to whether people are buying them at full value because mm. I don't know if it's still a thing, but I know like for a while market you keys. could you could buy them. You could like VPN into a different country yep. and buy it in that local currency, and it was way 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 cheaper. Um, but and then still, people resell those at, accounts at the volume that people are buying these accounts. It so would, it's going to be a pretty substantial amount. So of the argument then is that they want to ban cheaters to continue to get more account purchases, but they don't want to ban them too well because they want them to be able to make more money than they're spending on accounts with Battlestate. Because it, if they're if they're cheating in order to uh, RMT, they need to make enough money to pay for the account and make it worth their time. So this is an argument that has been made. That would be right. some very impressive 4D chess if they were able to balance that perfectly. I mean, look at... It doesn't even need to be perfect, though. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I, I could see it... I don't think it's 4D chess. I could see it being an incentive to not want to invest way too much more yeah i don't think it's a matter of 4d chess like like min maxing their investment into anti-cheat i think it's more about minimizing their investment into anti-cheat just focusing on other stuff. yeah so the threshold is not set by whether these guys can stay profitable that's a happy accident the threshold is set by just account sales and a real player attrition um where people are not playing the game anymore, which which would hurt the value of the real money trading. Yeah. So it, right. So it's there's no, it's a different it's a different like formula, but we end up with the same result. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Maybe. Which is that they are not investing enough into anti cheat. I personally don't believe they're investing enough into anti cheat. I don't think there's any way to prove or to state that that's the reason why. If that makes sense. Like we we have no idea. Maybe sure. it is, maybe it's not. I think it's a very dangerous game to play if that is the game that they're playing. Yeah. Um, what I suspect is they just don't find working on anti-cheat very interesting because as far as my <coughs> understanding goes, working on anti-cheat is insanely difficult. Right. And it's not very publicly rewarding right. unless something like this is going on. Sure. So if something like this is going on, work on anti-cheat, post your numbers, and people are going to praise you and come back to the game. But if something like this is not going on, if nobody's angry about cheaters... Then nobody's talking about anti-cheat. And working on anti-cheat doesn't bring you any benefit to your game. Right. So no I could revenue. See it, I could see, yeah. I could see it being more based on that. Sure. Because if, if there isn't... And there's a lot of problems with Tarkov. So, so if people aren't screaming about cheaters right now, well, you have like one of the biggest desync problems of any shooter game. Um, right. Should probably work on that. You have tons of other issues that like demand work. There's lots. Tarkov is so wide scope that you could watch like any Tarkov creator, talk to anyone who plays the game, go on any forum that talks about anything and see suggestions in every possible direction that are great. The, the, the potential backlog for this game is insane. Right. Like 
you, you talk about how complicated some of the systems are. They don't have to be that complicated to have the same depth. Right. Like, gearing up before a raid is always super annoying. What if you had, you like... You guys seem to enjoy it. It's sort of sick to watch. <laughs> I feel like I'm, like, watching your, like, your, like, private enjoyment time, you know? <laughs> the way you guys will sit and tinker with your different bullets and your different magazines. You like, gotta, you gotta make sure you bring the There's right definitely stuff. a perverse pleasure there. <laughs> okay, sure. But, if you, you could do that... You love how much you hate it. And then, like, put it on a mannequin... So that if you die with your buddies, you just like grab the mannequin stuff and it just all automatically goes on your character so you can jump back in the game. Right. But you could spend time setting up your stuff when you're not actively playing Which with your you friends. Which you definitely do enjoy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then that would be great. That's a feature that has been recommended. I think that would be awesome. It would also take development time. Development time is expensive yeah. and development time has massive opportunity costs because they could work on other stuff. So like, I think anti-cheat is just an unattractive thing to work on when people aren't mad about it that that i think is is probably more real than them like gaining money from the sure. the the sales to cheaters um but but i don't know so so yeah it blew up and uh you know great work great work goat on the video if you guys haven't checked it out definitely worth a watch it's a bit of a longer one um in no small part because there's so much of luke talking in it but uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Here's his channel, and uh, you can you can really see the the impact of this, the virality of this video. Thirty four thousand views, one point four million five hundred fifty thousand from four yeah. days ago. Oh, hey, look, it's us. Hey. hey, nice. Anywho, why don't we move on to our next topic today, which is the millennial pause. Yeah, what? I am getting very tired of articles that just kind of talk about. The differences between boomers and millennials or Gen Z is is working differently in the workplace. And here's the things that are special about Gen Z. I'm, 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 I'm sitting here going like, it just kind of hurts my brain because I, you're a millennial. I think we all. I think we all learned, you know, very, very young that generalizing, just putting people into oh, yeah. into buckets like this uh, is is not constructive. I think that you can definitely have conversations about, you know, what the impact was of, uh, of a particular generation and of the, the lifestyle that they led in general. I mean, I think you can you can look at the the the, the wealth, the the the. The, the 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 numerous uh or the, just the the sheer scale of the baby boomer generation and the amount of of wealth that it captured and and continues to hold the power that it captured and continues to hold and you can kind of go like yeah they they were extremely influential but to kind of go you know okay boomer essentially um and to and to be dismissive of boomers like i've met boomers that are anywhere from completely technically illiterate to being the people who literally invented the computer technology that you and I all enjoy today. The right? internet. Yeah. Right. Like that, that, that basically all boomers, right? Just by when all of this development was happening and how, how old that generation was. And in the same way, you know, I'll run into Zoomers that are anywhere from computer whiz kids to kind of me going, D did they have the internet? When you grew up, you know, like I, <laughs> couldn't you have just Googled this? I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Why are we having this conversation? Um, anyway, one of one of the dumb, I guess I made the mistake of clicking on too many of these because I, I am interested particularly in sort of uh, office and, and workplace um, accommodation on and, a few of those. and yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, man management techniques and that sort of thing. And a lot of them are really focused right now. Yeah. See, on, Conrad said in chat, I'm a zoomer. I have to, I have to deal with him. Yeah. So I got to click on these articles on, on Gen <laughs> Z entering the workplace and all the ways that Gen Z is different and whether it's your, your, your quiet quitting or your, you know, whatever, whatever else, right? Like whatever workplace trends are, are happening and really as far as i can tell trends are less about what's actually happening broadly and more about what's happening loudly on twitter or on tiktok yeah but that that's a whole separate conversation anyway i guess i've clicked on too many of these articles uh and i got one that i came across that just felt like the stupidest thing ever and i'm about to out myself as a dumb out of touch millennial but i learned recently uh what the millennial pause is called uh, is 
Did, are you familiar with the millennial pause? So other than you saying it before the show, no, I've never heard of this. Okay. The millennial pause is a short pause before you start speaking when you're recording a video. So if you were, say, recording a, a selfie for TikTok, you would go, okay, hold on. Let me just open up my camera here. No, yep. well, I got to turn on my selfie camera. Sorry, I'm a dumb millennial, so my default <laughs> camera position is the the rear camera. Yeah, like some kind of chump. Okay, <laughs> so I would basically go like this. The thing about Luke's shameless self promotion in that Tarkov <laughs> video is that he has every opportunity to promote himself. I mean, he's on this podcast every week. It's one of the biggest tech podcasts in the world. So I just don't know why he can't be honest with me about the reason that he's talking about this goat creator and this Tarkov thing. It's just, what, he wants more followers for his YouTube channel? I pretty much promised that channel's never going to take off, no matter how hard he works on it. So if he needs more money, why doesn't he just ask for it? It's pathetic. <laughs> And end. Okay. My only affiliation <laughs> in that channel was this, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. But so yeah, this, the pause at the beginning of this. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, uh, stop. So we go back to the beginning. That pause. That half a second. Oh, sure. sorry. I'll show the people. I'll show yeah. the people. The, okay. The, the millennial not showing. That pause where I blink and inhale. That's the millennial pause. And the, the article goes on to explain that with Zoomers, they will just be talking already when the video starts. So I was going to say, for like a live stream, would we just be mid-conversation when it starts? So that's what I'm talking about. I'm looking at this going... I don't know that this that is better? a I don't know that this is a generational difference as much as it might just be a tech savvy difference because I know that until the tally light is on, my camera's not recording. Yeah. But then, ain't nobody got time for me to blink and inhale, I guess. So, yeah, what that, do I make of this? Kind of what I was wondering is, like, do they just edit their videos better? Or... No. Apparently, it is some combination of not caring and knowing the exact timing of when your device will start recording so that you are just talking the instant... It starts recording. So for us, we would just have to not care because we actually can't know the exact time. Yeah. Well, be I mean, I use so many different kinds of cameras. Like as a, as a creator, I... Well, no, because this is a live sync thing. You don't know until that initializes. Oh, I don't even mean WAN show. I'm just talking in general, just okay. like any yeah. video. I, I, I promise you, as, as a content creator, I will never not millennial pause because it's... What, what, I'm going to do another take because something wasn't J recording properly? Jaden said in Flowplane Chat, Millennials lean more YouTube, Zoomers lean more TikTok, different time expectations and constraints. That was my understanding too. And then I read an article recently yeah. that showed that while they do watch a lot more TikTok, they actually watch more YouTube than they do TikTok. I don't know if that's real. It was surprising to me. It might not be legit. I think it was a survey more than like an actual data based thing. So maybe it's not legit. I don't know. But I just want to throw that out there because it's very surprising to me. Yeah. So Huxar in Floatplane Chat says it's that millennials don't trust that the recording has started till they see it has started, which. So they just trust immediately upon pressing the button that it started. Which I guess makes sense because we would have grown up with far less reliable technology. Like I, okay, a perfect example of this is that my Note 9, my old phone, had a little stylus, a little uh, Bluetooth stylus that had a little button on it that I could use as a remote shutter. And one of the things I liked about it most was that it meant that I could hold my phone with my rear camera facing me so I could take much higher quality selfies because I didn't have to be able to reach around and get at the shutter button mm -hmm. or even hold it awkwardly so I you know, had, could reach the volume button. I could just hold it in a way that was comfortable you know, put the arm around the missus and, and, you know, click, 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 click. But because I don't trust technology, I'd be like, don't move. Yeah. Did it actually take? Yeah. No, it didn't because freaking 10% of the time it just fucking doesn't, right? So <laughs> go get it ready again. Uh, like, uh, I don't know. It, it, guys, help me out here. Apparently there's, there's... Am there's, I out of touch or is it the children? No, it's the children who are wrong, right? Like, I'm trying to figure this out. There's a Wikipedia article for Millennial sure, Pause. Sure, hit me. 
<laughs> the millennial pause is barely perceptible. Pa is a barely perceptible pause that is present at the start of some recorded videos. Sure. Yeah, it's basically what we've already said. Yeah. You don't do the millennial pause in your YouTube videos because you have editors to cut it out. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just that Zoomers take an extra thirty seconds to cut the pause. Like, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, this is funny. This is funny. Mm -hmm. Float plane chat. This is great. Ben Mitchell says, I didn't even know what this was until you said it, and I now realize I've been doing it on apps like Snapchat. So apparently it's cringe. Millennial pause, millennial pause is cringe. So you just gotta trust it. Yeah, your 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 age is showing grandpa. Alright. I didn't know. If you look at professional live productions, you can see the ways they accommodate this. Yeah, actually, that's that's really true. They don't have a pause because they'll do five, four. So that you just start immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. One of the reasons we can't do that on WAN Show is that our dashboard, uh, like our restreamer, you, you probably noticed that we stream WAN Show on more than one platform. So that means because you can only have, to my knowledge, one endpoint in OBS. Is I that right? So. Okay. I think so. So because you can only stream to one destination, we have to go through an intermediary server. We have to have an extra hop before we actually go live on those platforms. So we go to our intermediary and then it splits out with all the different streams and all the different bit rates that are supported by the various platforms. We are usually live for a while before we go live on YouTube. And the reason for that is that it's like the ultimate millennial pause. You know, we'll be live for 20 minutes figuring out if there's any technical issues that we need to solve uh kind of going okay yeah we're gonna need to play uh audio from my laptop this show let's make sure that's working um okay yeah everything good to go all the titles are right like we'll do all of our our pre-checking while we're kind of live and testing audio levels and making sure that there's no glitchiness and when we press youtube and we and we spool up the restreamer to go to youtube there is a, a different delay that what does it depend on i actually have no idea because i've seen everything from as long as i kid you not about 15 seconds all the way to you remember that one time a couple months ago it was immediately live and i, I was caught totally unaware if you yeah. if you look back at that wan show i don't remember exactly how yeah, quickly i, I adapted sure. to it but if, if I seem panicked at the beginning of that show, it's because... It's like, whoa, how did it go already? I was expecting to sit there refreshing the page anywhere from half a dozen to a dozen times to see not, that indicator go. I've never bothered to look into, like, what's happening. There. It'd be kind of neat to yeah, have yeah. it be consistent, but it's a pretty low priority in terms of development, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, the pre-show is kind of our, our millennial pause. And then at the beginning of the video, because I have to wait for a refresh cycle of that page to know if the so, check is green. I just... So this is why I was saying I think the ah, only solution the, yeah. would be for us to just not care because we would have to be mid-conversation and then you notice that it's live and then we go. Yeah. That would be the only solution. I don't, I don't think like it's a that. problem that needs a solution, though. Yeah, yeah. We I, can just be millennial pausers. I think... Are you technically a millennial? I think so. It would be, like, barely, though, right? What's the what's the I don't line? know the cutoff. Who cares? Well, that's the thing, right? Is it's all arbitrary. <laughs> yeah. I think though that in this case it does a but 2026, so you got to be 26. Oh, then definitely. So yeah, you're definitely a millennial. I identify gross as a millennial old man at the very least. Yeah. I've always like anytime I see anything that's like millennials have ruined uh, pl uh plastic bags, I don't know. Um I'll be like, "Yep, that's probably me." I don't know. I always just, any article that talks about millennials, I just assume it's my group. I think I'm a pretty bog standard people. millennial. Yeah. 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 Millennials are apparently killing drinking is one of, one of the new ones. Um, so oh, yeah, that's us. <laughs> millennial stereotypes. Okay, let's, let's have some fun. Millennials are lazy. I mean, wouldn't you be if you didn't have to do everything manually? Just because you walk to school, you know, uphill both ways doesn't mean i should do it yeah it's uh, supposed to be better right isn't that the whole idea it's supposed to be better yeah for the things next are supposed generation? to improve yeah uh, like now it's only uphill one way man That's good my mom did this thing where she got rid of her microwave because it was like it it was it making something dependence on you know it was like too convenient and blah blah something i'm sitting here i'm sitting here going like you're gonna have a microwave again in less than six months i <laughs> guarantee it sure enough <laughs> I was 100% right about that. Nice, oh, yeah, nice, oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Of course they have a microwave now. And anytime I bring it up, it's like the subject is very quickly changed again, <laughs> which I really enjoy because I, I was, 
I don't know. I, I sometimes I can be a very direct communicator. <laughs> I was extremely direct about that when I was like, "That's really stupid." So you're just gonna take forever to heat things up for for what? <laughs> I mean, do we are we even gonna talk about the fact that you're like burning fossil fuels in order to <laughs> heat things up on your gas stove? In a probably not properly ventilated. Whatever. Like it yeah. might be, but probably not. Yeah, I, like I, the microwave is. Just plain good. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Millennials are technology obsessed. Yeah, yeah that's why probably not? true. It's, it, it was, we, we, it's just better. The internet happened like while we were growing up. That was a big deal. Well, we're uniquely positioned to see the before and the after. Yeah. Right? Like when I was in grade two, I still remember this stuff. Like, you know how you can have like little snippets, right? Is Valley speak? Like Valley Girl speak in here? No, it's not. Uh, but like, you know how you can like have these little <laughs> snippets of memory or like like little flashes, you know? Like you don't really remember it, but it's like, I know I did this report on boa constrictors. Sure. Why do I know that? Yeah, it was yeah, in yeah. it was in grade two. And and I, I I can almost see my terrible illustration on on the cover of my duotang, you know? <laughs> right? And I still remember the layout of my elementary school library, and I still remember where the encyclopedias were. Yeah. And the other reference books. We did book reports from books, like on nonfiction topics, right? And by the time I was in grade... It's like if someone else had the encyclopedia that you needed... Because there, there would be like, the encyclopedia would be a whole shelf. Yeah. Because it would be all alphabetized. Yeah. And if they had the letter or whatever. That you needed. You, need it, you just have to wait. Or uh, my school had several encyclopedias. Okay. Only one relatively current. So you could see ah, if you could find any information in yeah. the older one. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, you were pretty much boned. Then I was in grade four, five, six when Encarta, you know, an encyclopedia on CD-ROM became... Yes. A thing that you could have yeah then you fast forward just a couple of years later and when was wikipedia founded well you look that up apparently Wikipedia claims that uh millennials are people born from 1981 to 1996 okay so then wikipedia came along by the time i was in high school wikipedia was a thing was it perfectly trustworthy of course not is it perfectly trustworthy today of course not but it's get you certainly, it is certainly a better place to start than cracking open a dusty tome. I will <laughs> promise you that, right? Um, and then, and then we lived through the the move from text to multimedia to video, right? So we've and kind the of video move was like kind of messy because oh, people think of messy. it now as these like centralized things. Like there's okay, there's YouTube. There's, I guess, TikTok, there's Facebook with yeah. video, there's Instagram with video, whatnot. At the beginning of video on the internet, it was just all these like random, sure. random yeah, like, like, like people CNET. with, sure. But even yeah. like, think about Justin TV before Twitch. Yeah. Like it was just a weird janky website that yeah. happened to support live video. Like it was not, it was not corporatized. It wasn't clean. It well, was and just it wasn't like, organized. No, a lot of right? original video viewing New websites, grounds. you would just download it. Mm -hmm. You couldn't even watch it live. It yeah, would just, think, you'd see all these thumbnails and you would download the whole video. Where did people even locally. watch like pure ownage? You know? Yeah, I think you had to download it. I think you had to download it. And like the Numa Numa video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just had to download that, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Like it, it was a very, it's, and people would share, <laughs> people would share stuff through just these like insane email chain letters that you would just see like forwarded oh, know, like a million right? times. I never that was i was not on that train that was an okay boomer thing for me yeah for, for sure. sure yeah for sure okay uh millennials are more socially responsible um well the word more is important i think that i think that when it comes to mindless oh. consumption i i definitely notice then more who? of it with my with my elders yeah, so is the is the more compared to like boomers? I love I love my family or Gen X, but my boomer relatives the way that they just buy like the dumbest sh and just don't understand why I don't want it. I feel like that's a frustration that I share with a lot of my peers. Gen X is 1965 to 1980, and I yeah. guess boomers before that. Yeah, from so, 1945 to 1965. In my experience, 
from yeah from my experience boomers definitely a lot of mindless consumption gen x not so much well my, boomers my had a lot parents not a lot of mindless consumption yeah okay i mean it also i mean but that's the thing is right these are generalizations and there's always going to be individuals for sure there's always going to be alternatives i know plenty of millennials that just mindlessly oh, acquire yeah. oh yeah just acquire yep I mean, the habits I watched have changed. Certain friends of mine go through that transition of like, wh where do they get their source of happiness? Okay, it's like sports or hanging out with their friends every day or yeah. whatever in high school or whatever it is. And then they get a job, they stop hanging out with their friends, they stop playing sports, and now it's just like buying things or like sure. drinking alcohol or whatever. Like the the source of happiness shifts, and for some piece, people it goes to retail, just retail shopping. therapy. Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. of that. Yeah, um, millennials are job hoppers. I mean, I can't say that's been a thing for me, but I, I think in terms of generalizations, that's probably a, a truer, a truer trend. I know a lot of people that do. But yeah. like, let's look at the way that the landscape has changed in terms of the workplace. I mean, boomers enjoyed by far the best worker protections of any generation, as far as I can tell. Yep. We went from uh, essentially, you know, a free for all, right? Like realistically there there were there were two enormous global conflicts in the in the 20 years leading up to like 25 years leading up to the baby boomer generation scarcity was was a, a, a huge thing and you basically did whatever it took um forget forget about you know protections there was you know there's when, also the great recession yeah well yeah well when did the uh, when did the new deal when did the new deal kick in uh, was that roosevelt i can't remember so we're talking about this from a north american perspective obviously right um but you look at the at the at the trend towards like union employment in North America and then away from yeah. it as we're going into now just about the least union thing ever, which is would be the gig economy. And gig and now, economy has been sold as a positive thing, but I I patently reject it. I mean, we had we had a lot of conversations early on about whether Linus Media Group would take on contractors, for example, which is quite common in the in the production industry. You you would you just hire contractors for your projects, and then at the end of the project, you cut everyone loose, and then you bring on a new set of contractors, some repeating, some new, uh, for whatever your next project is. And I was like, well, no, we're never going to be structured that way. Uh, we just need to make sure that our pipeline is consistent enough that when we, we hire people, need them. yeah, when we hire people, we bring them on full time, and uh, they have the the benefits of being employees. But I would say that for many millennials, it's probably not a choice to be a job hopper. Like if you don't have if you don't have the protections, um, and my in brother used to drive truck for the so yeah. in Vancouver, there's like some people refer to it as Hollywood North. There's a lot of film done yeah. in Vancouver and my brother used to drive he was a teamster so he'd drive trucks he would do he would do whatever for for the movies and uh he, he did very well for himself he did a really good job so it was fine but uh it was a contract position yeah. there was a union but he was still a contractor under the union so he'd work a, a movie or a show and then it would end and then see you later maybe he'd have another job lined up maybe not yeah who knows it's and Again, he did well, so people would request him, so he did fine. But, like, it's a little sketchy, you know? I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, you could probably make that generalization, but it's also I don't it, think it was a choice. I think if we could just be lifers at one company and have that actually well, work out fine, that. Yeah. then that would be great. There's also been a trend of, yeah, needing to hop for for, like, Compensation increases. Livable income yeah, be reasons. Well, yeah, because you look at the way, especially at the very low end, the way that compensation has scaled relative to living costs, yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. So you got a hop trying to grab that. It's also, Jaden pointed this out, and I think it's going to be off my screen, so I don't think I'm going to be able to quote it perfectly. I'm sorry. Um, oh, no, it is. He said, this is the age of the side gig. So we went from one person being able to generate a comfortably healthy enough income for a family of four. Yeah to two people needing each of them having full-time jobs and side gigs to barely scrape by <laughs> like it uh, it's been pretty rough. and then there's the next generalization our sense of entitlement <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think that feeling like you're owed something when you look at how things you know oh, man 
uh, how e- like impossible it is to buy real estate, every, how impossible it is to own realistically anything. Every time it trends, <sighs> like boomer senator or you know boomer you know investment banker or whatever uh, guesses how much houses cost. Oh yeah, and the values are like <laughs> or literally. Groceries. Yeah, not not. I mean, groceries not so much because that's a question of inflation. Whereas housing costs are not a function of inflation; well, okay, they're a so function the, of the, the reason commodification. Why I the groceries one is yeah. you'll, you'll sometimes hear uh, the question asked of what cost of living is. So they'll say sure. like, "Oh, you probably have to spend this much on your on your rent, this much on your food, whatever." And the food number is always like, "Bro, that would feed an average person for like a week, not a month." Like. I have been, I I am in a very. Um, I sent. I, sorry, I, I sent Linus a, a picture. I don't even think it was that long ago. Yeah. Because I was buying this like package of chicken. Surprise, surprise. Um, and it's the exact same package of chicken from the exact same store. Yep. That I've been buying it from forever. It's and I I don't remember the year gap, but I think it was like five or six years, something like that. And it was exactly double the price. I. Like, that's, crazy i am in a very privileged position where i don't have to think too much about the cost of groceries and so for many years i didn't look that closely because i you know especially before we had a bigger family it just wasn't that big of a deal as long as we weren't eating out too much it was fine it it didn't really have to think about it right yeah even i am noticing it's 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 just it's mind blowing. I, I saw a little I saw a little pack of raspberries. Yeah, they're out of season. Sure, I saw a little pack of raspberries about this big by this tall. Not even the deep one. Okay, pack of raspberries. Yeah, the shallow like tray. It was over ten dollars <laughs> at Nestor's Market. I, ten fucking dollars. Yeah, it was I, like two hundred and fifty grams of raspberries. I left Save On with three grocery bags. And it was like 160 bucks. I was just like, oh man. And like, yeah, they were fairly stacked full, whatever, whatever. But like, damn, I don't know. The commodification of real estate does need to end. Um, And then uh, the last stereotype, millennials are praise hungry. I mean. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. All right. You know what? I'm okay. I'm okay with being a millennial. Yeah. Give me my avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty good. I, ne- yeah. I never liked it. You got to get tuna and cheese too, though. I and like tuna and cheese on my avocado toast. My uh, my <laughs> partner made some for me, and she had like red onions on it, mm. along with the avocado, mm. and like all this other stuff. Sounds expensive. And I was I was pretty sold. It was actually like probably pretty expensive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, we went out for dinner. Man, that was really expensive. And it, okay, I the biggest problem was it wasn't that good. Like, look, I've got kids. Okay. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really go out anywhere other than, you know, stuff some food in your face and feed your brood kind of places. You know what I mean? So we'll, like, yeah, we'll hit the IHOP or whatever. Yeah. But we went to kind of a like a mid scale place, like a little bit nicer than IHOP, but not like, uh, you know, Gotham Steakhouse yeah, or whatever. Like, you know, not, like just it's not too crazy. Like, but it's like a nice enough. Yeah. And still like a chain or whatever though. And like, what was my entree? Like $26 or something like that? Yeah. And it wasn't even big. No. It was pasta. Yeah. It was pasta. <laughs> it's practically free. <laughs> Just fill the fucking plate. It's like cheaping out on the rice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine was really expensive too. It was, it was like, I don't know. I w- I w- in that case, I would have been more happy if I thought it was the better but it really wasn't that amazing. Um, yeah, but then, I mean, we were talking about it while we were there too, and it feels like the relative cost of groceries versus restaurants, I feel like groceries have, has gone up sharper than restaurants have. I don't because, know. Because like if I compared... I just haven't eaten out enough, so it's hard for me to know. Well, because I was thinking about when we went to dinner when I was at the grocery store, and I was comparing some of the costs of the things that would have been included in my meal. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that was really expensive. Also, they didn't really make a ton, considering someone had to cook all this and it had to be served, and we took up space yeah. in an establishment, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, like, there's not that many people in here, yeah. so you know, rent has gone. <laughs> yep. So like all these different factors, I was like, wow, I really they they didn't hose me here. Like, yeah, it just is really expensive. Yeah, I don't know. 
What do we want to talk about next? Olympics of esports? Yeah. Wait, did that phone this with the game on it wild. ever make its way to us? Dan, did you get it? No. Oh. When show it, writer it was asked said there, it was said there was a phone. If uh, wait, are you still here? Oh, do you do you hang out during Wan Show now too? But you just you hide over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll introduce Wan Show writer once uh, the probation period is over. But um, coming up pretty soon. assuming everything goes according to plan. But I think it's time for us to talk about the Olympics of esports. Do the you Olympics. Wanna... Not not only that, the Olympics <laughs> is getting esports. The yeah. Olympics has declared their first ever competitive esports competition. And honestly, when I saw that title, I was actually a little excited. Because I was yeah. like, you know what? It's taken Except them this long. Except that the Olympics long. is a horrible, horrible organization, or the the I I O C or whatever yeah. is a horrible organization, and you should have known immediately as soon as they were involved that it was going to be terrible. My, this is on you. My, my naivete assumed that they were going to do some like really informed things with this um they freaking didn't <laughs> at all the list of games to be included in this competition lacks things that you might expect like counter-strike or dota or league of legends or rocket league my initial Wait, reaction they don't have rocket league no well why would they what they don't have dota or league of legends no i have actually not looked into this oh no what so they don't have actual it's competitive esports? so insanely worse than you could possibly imagine. Okay, because I assumed it would be terrible and therefore didn't look into it. It's so, so you much actually worse. know more about this than I do. Yeah. My initial, because the way that I've always thought they would do this is they would include things that are not necessarily that relevant anymore. Like wait. maybe. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. We'll get there. No. Hold on. No, I Hold can't. On. Now you understand why this is a main topic. Wait. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Okay, we'll skip my anecdotes. We'll go right no, into no. it. No, no, do your anecdotes. Okay, I okay, need to okay. recover. Okay. <laughs> so I I have always imagined that they would do this in a in a kind of weird way. They would pick games that aren't necessarily super popular anymore. Because if you pick Dota or League StarCraft 2, they're gonna rebalance it, right? Sure. And it's gonna be a problem. So pick like StarCraft 1. Oh, I see. They're not patching that game anymore. It's fixed. Sure. Right? And there's a lot of skill involved, very sure. specific skill involved that you could okay. kind of measure and people could actually be better at each other. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe not CSGO or because like CSGO quake. is currently under development. You know, like, yeah. like a yeah. pure skill shooter or yeah, something like maybe. that. And like, there's problems with that. Oh my goodness. Uh, 1v1 me Quake 3, let's go. Yeah, so like it would, it would be interesting. That's maybe a way to approach it, right? Maybe they do go with the current generation stuff, but then it becomes an issue. Which one do you pick, Dota or League? There's going to be a massive war about that. And how do you balance this idea that people are actively like... I, it just becomes weird commercially. What they decided to do was the absolute worst possible option out of everything that you could have possibly imagined. I don't what? think that anyone could have guessed what this. What the f*** is Tic Tac Bow? Well, it makes sense that you've never heard of it because uh, is Thank there a you, list of all the things that they picked? So there is somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so, Dan, do you want to do you want to jump on the uh, the Luke camera here, maybe, and I can play some tic tac bow for the people while while we get this going. I want to see the Olympics esports page really okay. quickly. Enter the arena. Yeah, here we go. Olympic esports do, 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 arena do. mode. Okay, I'm joining arena mode. What the devil phone is this? My goodness, it's an absolute brick. Okay, doesn't matter. Twitter post. Wait. I just want to see the list Wait. of the categories. So I pay, I pay to enter the arena, but then I can <laughs> win a prize. If I win, it's plus twenty. If I lose, it's minus eight. Oh my god, my slots for loot crates are currently full, and you will not be able to earn new crates. You can still earn trophies and go. Oh my god. Okay. Air, Arena 2, Lion City, searching for opponents. Uh, all right. I have strong wind resistance stats here. Uh, Dan, are you having a hard time finding the focus button over there? It's, uh, it's locked on. It's locked? Okay, cool. Thanks, Dan. Okay, it is my turn. What do I do? Oh, my goodness. What did I just do? I don't okay. even know what just happened. So, I don't know how to play this. Oh, 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 what the, oh, what the crap? Uh, so I'm almost out of time or something? Or like, <laughs> do I let go or? Oh. Hey, you got the top middle one. 
Okay. Time for the other player to play this tic tac go uh, tic tac toe game that is apparently in the Olympics. What? It just goes exactly where you say. <laughs> what the crap? Uh, okay. So you just yeah, it just it there's it doesn't even drop off. What the heck is the point of this? Amazing. I mean, I've played tic-tac-toe games at, like, Castle Fun Park that are kind of like this. Like, have you ever played, like, basketball tic-tac-toe? No. Like, where you, so you have to sink a basket. I can imagine, To yeah. hit the, to hit the thing. I can imagine what it is. Right? Um, uh, apparently, there's a little bit there's of There's a little off. bit of drop. There's not much, because I am nailing this, even though I've never touched this game before. Well, maybe you're just an Olympian. Oh, okay. You so you can convert someone else's you thing to your theirs. thing. Okay. Okay. So that's neat, but then I guess I just need to do this. Oh, oh, hello, buddy. Okay. So, but then they still win? get to go. Oh. No, I won. No. Why would? Why on earth would they have shot that? Future Olympian Linus Sebastian. Yeah, yeah. Milk fantasy was defeated. <laughs> 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 okay, so the, what a username. So that's archery, but there are more sports, right? The sports that they chose oh, were no. archery, no, baseball, no, chess, no, cycling, well, okay, chess, sure, fine, fine, cycling, which is one of my favorite ones. We'll get into that oh. in a moment. Dance, motor sport, sailing, and taekwondo and tennis. All of these are represented by video games as you would expect some of them are please tell me tennis is wii sports <laughs> i honestly when i first read ready. this i assumed it was all going to be re-sport uh wii sports tennis is apparently tennis clash taekwondo is a game called virtual taekwondo uh -huh. sailing is a game called virtual regatta okay i don't know yeah a regatta is a sailing competition okay yep. makes yep. sense motorsport is no, just well I mean, it doesn't make that much sense it's like it's like boating culture sense so it like doesn't make sense, but <laughs> these two line up best for me out of all of them. Yeah. Or no, that's not true. One of them later on does a little bit more. Motorsport is just Gran Turismo. Sure. It's like okay. Dance is just dance. Like okay. Okay. Cycling is Swift. We'll get into why that's interesting in a second. Chess is just chess.com. Okay. All right. Like, let's go. Okay. Okay, games except, in the Olymp No, how could they screw that up? Except No. Hold on. And I before people get into the battle between chess apps, I like and use both of them, okay? So relax. But chess.com is the more corporate-friendly, lots of paid options version. Lee Chess is the free for everyone all the time, everything is free, doesn't ask you to pay for anything. Sure, option. but at least it's a valid measure totally. of your chess skill. Totally. Like that's and, where I'm coming at it from. Because chess.com is huge. That is not fucking archery. And chess.com is legit and there's no pay to win on chess. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. So that's all fine. No, no major problem there. Baseball is WBSC e baseball power pro or sorry. I will say it properly. WBSC e baseball TM power pros. And archery, as I've we've never already heard seen, of any of this crap. is Tic Tac Bow. Well, the reason why you haven't heard of Tic Tac Bow is because it was literally just released. Um, <laughs> it had, when I looked at it, it had 100 downloads on the Android Play Store and is not on iOS. So it's not a game that people have really played well, before. Well, I guess it's a level playing field then. It also For now, has, until it, they microtransaction the crap out of you. So it also has some issues, because there's microtransactions that apparently can actually give a competitive advantage. Oh, good. Rough. So Olympics just becomes even more pay-to-win than it already was? It also looks like Tennis Clash has at least some the, At least the previous pay-to-win well. was like, which countries have the best, you know money to pay coaches and money to pay athletes to or just to, be athletes or to buy equipment like yeah. special shoes yeah, or exactly. whatever else yeah so now it's just no you actually just dump money into a mobile game studios account and then you're an olympian one of the ones so chess i think is interesting i think, I think it's very interesting that chess is in the olympics now um but that's kind of it's i feel like chess out of all of these it's in its it's in its own little area 
Yeah, I uh, there's no pay to win. Yeah, chess is fine. I I I I I don't know that we needed Olympic chess. I think it yeah. could have been any. I think chess could just do their own championship, kinda which they kind of do, already. which is totally fine. Yeah. But if the Olympics raises the profile of chess, I think that's super cool. Yeah. I, chess is kind of its own thing in this, in my opinion. But I could almost see it being like a completely separate event. Like, why have just chess? Why, It'd be kind of interesting if they promoted like a different form of it, like blitz. Yeah, or well, something I mean, like the, you've already got the you've Speed already got chess. the Olympics, you've already got the Paralympics. Why don't you just have like the board game Olympics then at that point, right? Like, do it during the same period, make it part of the event. Like, it doesn't ha- it doesn't have to be the Olympics. Yeah, fair enough. To be a, an IOC, you know, like event mind. Yeah, you could you could have like Go and chess. Sure, why not? A bunch of these. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Mahjong. Poker, um, like I don't care. Yeah, screw it. Uh, cycling. <laughs> I don't know a ton about Zwift, but I just find this very funny. I'm fairly certain that Zwift is just like a stationary bike racing game. So I'm pretty sure the esport of cycling is just going to be cycling. It's just cycling indoors in a stationary position. Yeah, <laughs> it's just <laughs> which, like, that's. That's great. If if you get your cardio by chilling at home on a on a bike, ripping through whatever, fine. Maybe you're sketched out about like biking around in the rain if you live somewhere that's really rainy or whatever else because you don't want to like fall. Like I I don't know, whatever. Sounds good. But did we need cycling but stationary as an as, as an Olympic sport? I don't know. Doesn't seem like it to me. <laughs> like there's, I see different categories for this, right? So chess is in its own kind of thing. And I agree with what Linus said. Maybe it could be there. But if it's there, I feel like we should have an assortment of those games like Mahjong, yeah, Go, all this sure. other kind of stuff. But then there's there's archery and baseball and uh, what is it? Taekwondo. Yeah. And Or not necessarily Taekwondo. Archery, baseball, and tennis where they're just like these microtransaction ad-based pay-to-win games which are like clearly junk like why is why is this a thing and then there's the two what do you mean junk i won that archery match i i apologize future olympian linus sebastian um then there's the two like these are major title video games games yeah which is grand Grand Turismo Turismo. for motorsports okay and just dance for dance which is like okay that's interesting i mean if you're gonna go if you're gonna go full meme like make it ddr then let's go Honestly, yeah. In my opinion, I have watched people play DDR, DDR with fascination. Pretty cool. Because it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm, compared to Just Dance, DDR would actually be a much more interesting spectator experience. Yeah. Especially if it was like almost like uh, gymnastics based. You know how they have to like pick what moves they're going to try to do beforehand? So in DDR, oh, you could so be it's like. down to the execution. I'm going to do like a multi pad. So I'm gonna like dance across these two pads at the same time, yeah. like like try different difficulty rating. And things. then you have like kind of I mean, I think you could have like it a, could be cool. a touch of subjectivity, like or not subjectivity, sure. but like you could have kind of like what they do in figure skating, where the there are points assigned to yes. the difficulty of the routine. Exactly. Yeah. So if you have to switch pads six times, that has this modifier or whatever else. Yeah, you could totally build a system for that that would be kind of awesome. There is a hundred percent a way that you could do Olympic dance that I would Olympic dance is an esport, but just that dance I think would be interesting. Probably, Come on, probably not. It's, I mean, the tracking's yeah. not even accurate enough. At yeah. least with DDR, there is there is there is a clear there's a precision to it. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a way to measure objectively how close to the desired result the participant got. You yeah. know, yeah. I there there are people who are at master level of DDR. That I don't care if you've never seen DDR before. I don't care if you don't care about dancing games. I don't care if you don't care about rhythm games, whatever. It is genuinely fascinating to watch them just like rip on like these insanely high difficulty um, songs or in very difficult ways or whatever else. Yeah, and they always do that thing where they put their arms behind them on the bar. Like if I genuinely try to do what this person is probably going to do once I get into more difficult parts, my legs are going to twist up and I'm going to fall over. Like there's no, I'm never going to get this done. I'm not built for I, that. I, I couldn't even touch any of this already. And you're telling me this is the easy part? Oh, are they doing two pads? Yeah. Yeah. Like what the? Buddy's on two pads. 
Two pads, let's go. Like, that's insane. And then having, like, a competition of this. Sure, yeah, I'm Where people are trying more difficult, more difficult things. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, there's there's the, the jank pay-to-win games. Then there's the, like, major titles that... Uh, I don't. I also don't think Gran Turismo Gran should Turismo have been the racing one. Gran Turismo doesn't need to be the one. There are extremely high level racing like sim, sim games. Sim grade games. Yeah. I mean, Gran Turismo is more sim like. I get it. Sure. Than some but of them. But it's yeah. not as simmy as something like a Project Cars or something like so a. So, like, the, it being Gran Turismo makes me ask, like, what was the goal? Because it's kind of. like a, F1. It's almost in the. It's, yes, it's leaning more simmy, yeah, but it's, it's in the middle. It's not arcadey and it's not simmy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you could have gone with, like, Mario Kart and just had it be, like, totally oh, arcade. Oh, iRacing. Sorry, not Project Cars. Yeah, iRacing. That's the one I meant. Yeah, so... It, Sorry, I'm not I'm not into the racing game scene. You could have gone iRacing. You yeah. could have gone Mario Kart. They went... Not yeah, Assetto really Corsa. Not between, but they went, like, here. Like, any one of those three. F1, iRacing, Assetto Corsa. Sure. Sure, I don't fine. think I would have blinked at any one of those. Nope. Yeah. But Gran Turismo? A little weird. Like, why don't you just go Forza at that point? Why don't you just, you know what? Why don't you do just like Cruise in USA? I'd be, I'd be way more interested <laughs> to watch a Cruise in USA championship. That'd be kind of sick. Ridge Racer? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, th and then there's cycling where it's like literally, it's, it's quite literally just cycling. It's this, like, I hope the person who wins whatever equivalent distance of race in actual, just real, actually on a bike outside, whatever. Just gets cycling, two medals for just it. Just also wins the Zwift one. I really hope that happens. That'd be very funny. Yeah, Smash. Where is Smash? Is, again, this is no disrespect for people who race Zwift. And I know that there's people that do it actually quite seriously. That's cool. I'm not down on that. The only thing that confuses me is that it's so similar. So, like, what's almost what's the point in it being an eSport, you know? And then there's the last category, which I haven't looked into either of these. But Virtual Regatta and Virtual Taekwondo. They have very obviously similar names. They seem to be in kind of their own category. Virtual Regatta. It's very oh. weird. Okay. Olympic Esports license. Virtual Regatta Offshore. At least it's on the Play Store and the App Store. In short. That helps. What am I looking at here? What is this? This on, is on Instagram. Okay, so Virtual Regatta. It looks very old. I guess it is a mobile it's game. It's a mobile game. Yeah. Okay. So, oh. You can change your sales. Okay. Let's go. It's time to buy some sales. Gamer time. Microtransactions. Let's go. Okay. I can't even. I can't even. Tell I don't what know I'm that. Be looking it's at microtransactions here. for effect. Do you clear. have any actual gameplay footage, you buttheads? Oh man, they want us to click on. Flipping chat wants us to click on the Taekwondo. It's like Connect simulators. They say. Connect simulators. You know, like Xbox Connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, virtual. Taekwondo. Invitational event. You need Wait, a console? It's an indie it's console. It's an indie console? Okay, I see. And the Olympics is going to be in Singapore. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So this is a whole this is a whole rabbit hole then. The the company that makes virtual taekwondo has this indie console that was kickstarted but you can't actually get it that has some kind of okay where I I've got uh I've got some footage here and it's the same company that makes uh, that stupid tic tac bow game. Yeah. So what am I what am I looking at here? Is this it? Are you sure? First virtual Taekwondo International Championship 2020. That's 2020. I don't think Wait, that's... this says instruction. I don't think this is it. What the heck am I looking at here? I don't think the right thing. Where's virtual Where's virtual Taekwondo? Olympics Taekwondo. Okay, I got to click the thing. But yeah, it's the same Singapore-based company and then the Olympics are going to be in like Singapore or something, so it's a whole it's a whole thing. All right, I'm on their site now. I'm on their site. Follow the glory of virtual Taekwondo. Okay, watch now. What what am I looking at here? Guys, this is live. This is live. We're reacting. We're doing what we can. Gymnasts. What is this what does this have to do with anything? No, no, no. We're not uh, oh, I don't need a uh, no, I don't need an Olympics. Their player took a long time to strike. load. We should we should try to sell 
So, uh... Yeah, they should use float plane. Yeah. What is their site? What am I even looking at? <laughs> find out more. I'm trying to find out more, yet numpties. I think it just scrolls you down. How to fall? Yeah, like, what is this? Stay <clears throat> updated. No, I want... I don't want to stay... I want to update now. What is it? <laughs> what, what am I looking at here? Okay. I mean, that kick looks pretty good. But, like, what is this? I did. I did. Uh, I'm so confused right now. Okay, I give up. Uh, let's do some sponsor spots. <laughs> so, yeah. Sure. sure. All right. Uh, you gotta give me a second here. The show is brought to you today by. Your last discussion question is funny. We didn't get to it, but it's funny. Oh, we can get to it after. Let's do it. Do we'll it do it after. The show is brought today by Thorum. Thorum hand makes wedding bands and rings from rare and unique materials. They work with everything from whiskey barrels to antlers to Damascus steel to World War II rifle stocks and even dinosaur fossils. I can't get this thing out of the bag. Me to get it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the Meteosaur is made out of black tungsten carbide, meteorite, and real T Rex bones. Uh, so this. 40, sorry, 4 billion year old meteorite and a 65 million year old dino bone are proof that good things take time, but great things take a little longer. You can get a ring sizer kit on their website to make your life easier when it comes to figuring out what ring size fits you best. And every ring ships within one business day and comes with a free Thorum silicone activity band and a beautiful wooden box that Luke will eventually get open. <laughs> With over 10 years of experience and over 5,000 happy customers, Thorum is there for you, whether you need a wedding band or just a cool-looking ring. So what are you waiting for? Head over to the link in the description below and get 20% off with code WAN. He's got this. He has the strength. He has the power. Power and strength. <laughs> Luke Lafreniere. Here it is. <laughs> you can't see anything anyway, but... Thorum insists that we open up the box on camera. There, there's wow, a ring in heavy. this little bag. That's the activity band. Oh. That makes sense. That is, wow, that's, that's quite the hefty thing. It's actually kind of cool. Okay, anyway, the point is, the show is also brought to you by The Ridge. Minimalist, yet functional, The Ridge Wallet is your next everyday carry. Ridge Wallets can hold up to 12 cards and still have room for cash with either a money clip or an elastic band. And... They're, if you worry about the quality of their products, you are silly because they use only the highest grade materials. Okay, that's not in the talking points. Uh, they use only the highest grade materials uh, and offer a lifetime warranty so you can enjoy peace of mind. Uh, the Ridge doesn't just make wallets. They, their key case is a favorite of ours over here at LMG. It's made with the same materials as their wallet and keeps all your keys secure in a small profile. No more jingle jangle in your pockets. And... Again, no need to worry. The key cases also come with a lifetime warranty. So follow the link in the description and check out what the Ridge has to offer. You can even get 10% off your entire purchase and free worldwide shipping by using code WAN at checkout. Finally, the show is brought to you by Zoho One. Zoho One makes running your business easier by integrating CRM systems with other business applications, such as accounting, marketing software, HR, or communication. Read it slowly for graphics. Their easy-to-use interface keeps tools organized so you don't need to be a technical expert. You can send out purchase orders, create marketing campaigns, and manage shift scheduling all in a few clicks. Their CX dashboard helps you identify where you need to improve your customer experience, and they've got numbers, charts, pies, and funnels. Wow, look at that. Read slowly for graphics. You can see the data all in a glance, and what the devil am I looking at right now? <laughs> Are you working on the beach? No problem. Their mobile app makes your dreams come true. You can easily run your business anywhere. This has to be Dennis. I bet Dennis was involved. So check out Zoho One using the link down below and get a free 30-day trial with no credit card required. Yes. I'm hijacking this back. Yes. I'm taking my camera view back. Yes, it was Dennis. <laughs> yes, it was Dennis. All right. Well, that makes perfect sense. Oh, man. Oh, that was a big one. Man, that, okay, let's, what, what was our second discussion question? Oh my god, that's not a good discussion question. I disagree with both of you. It's not a question, it's just a statement, but it's very funny. Uh, the discussion question is, Skyrim in the Olympics win. I want to see the bronze medalist clip through the podium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, that's great. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of speculation um, that a lot of the titles were chosen on the basis of their close relationship to established governing bodies. 
Uh, yeah. So developers in Singapore yeah. that had close relationships with the governing body in Singapore. I think it's pretty clear this is all corrupt <clears throat> as f and yeah. um, we should we should we should reject it. Everything yes. but the chess one. Yeah, because like chess.com is pretty legit. fine. Yeah. All right. Oh, we should do a couple of merch messages. Uh, if you guys are wondering, the way to interact with the show is not through Twitch bits, not through super chats over on YouTube. It's through merch messages. And we've actually got, oh, we've got a crap ton of stuff to announce for the store today, don't we? Yeah, lots. Those of you who have been paying very close attention will have probably already noticed our big product launch of the week. Hey, Dan, I think I need to put you back on the camera. He's like, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. Um... So the way to send a merch message, which means that you're not just throwing money into the ether, you will also get an item in the mail, is to go on lttstore.com, and in the checkout, there's a place to leave a merch message. And uh, one of our new items for this week, I, the reason I'm digging this out is because I have a full one. Ah, oh, okay. So here's my loadout for the <laughs> tech pouch. It's a pouch, and you fill it up with tech, or toiletries, or tools or realistically anything else that you could possibly want to fill it with so you want to have a look at my tech pouch yeah you've can, I, got, can i open up my tech pouch for got, you <laughs> you can take everything out oh my feel free okay. to unlo unload it let's go uh you might want to move your water bottle a little bit poor dan is uh you know got a situation action, action can you want it down here is that better yeah i'm sure okay, yeah sure. so you've got i don't know what this is a dock. Of That's some an kind? external USB um, drive. Just a drive. Yeah, USB SSD. Okay. Cool, yeah. Cool, you know, sometimes cool, cool, cool. I'll have to copy like very large game libraries or whatever else, and it's. I still it's, have my Angel Bird. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. that one's a higher capacity. It's like say, four terabytes. Probably a lot bigger. Yeah. Uh, he's got a. Compensating. A, a, <laughs> he's got a C. I have a much bigger. Adapter. I have a much bigger X than Luke, but, and X is external SSD. Because it sure isn't anything else. <laughs> <laughs> these, I believe, have been accessible to you for many years. I don't oh, yeah. think these are new at all. No, nope, they're, they're just not little, new. Like, they're just headphone adapter things. They're in my thing. Yeah, yeah. If you need to go from four helpful. pole to dual three pole, yeah. just dump them on the table. Dump okay, them on okay, the table. Okay, Let's okay, go. Okay. Let's go. What's in my tech pouch? C to C, lightning. Yep. yep. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Yeah, very close. Ah, uh, here it is. Good job. There's the angel bird. I also have my angel bird. Yeah. I yeah. never use it. It just has like some crap on it that I might need once in a while. They're so cool though. Yeah, I know. I actually really like them. Um, this, okay, so this is an expandability thing. Sexy so, dongle. Yeah. Yeah. HDMI. With everything you could need for a laptop to make it less annoying to use as a laptop. Jerry rig everything nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I even misspoke and called it a nice, but I'm down with that. I mean, it's pretty nice. LTT screwdriver. Of course. Why wouldn't I? So the tools you need all the time for yep. everything. Uh, my my needle nose pliers and my side cutters would be in there, but I left them at XQC's house. So I asked my assistant to get me some more. He's that makes sense. Mine. Sorry. He's still mine. He's still yours. That's hilarious. He apparently took Dan's. <laughs> Love it. You've got a like cap for a controller. Yeah. Like a thumbstick cap. Uh, that was just garbage that was in my bag that I accidentally threw into the tech pouch. So there's no reason for me to carry that around. I mean, it could be useful. That's if a someone, mic. If someone has like a grody thumbstick, mm. you can just cover it. That's a lavalier mic holder. Um, that makes it, sense. Yeah, it's it makes, routed on the back. Yeah, it 3D makes printed. the lines on your shirt less noticeable when you're wearing a lav mic. So it's just the kind oh, of thing yeah, I would sense. have to carry around that no one else would. Tons more random cables. What the heck? Yeah, that's like an old iPhone. Yeah, that's like an everything cable. It can be like adapted, so you can. Yeah, oh, see? I see. Okay, yep, pretty cool, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So micro B for and my. It's the same prong thing that Logitech uses. Ah, uh, that's because it's for the Logitech mouse that is in there. Ah, it just happens to have that adapter on it. Is where's, my mouse not in the there? Where's the mouse? No. Oh, did someone take my mouse. Nope. Here's some uh, lavalier tape. Uh, yep, yep, yep. That's the medical tape that I use. Yeah. There's an outside zipper. It uses the same YKK waterproof TM. Um, I consider them water resistant, but they call them waterproof. So the same YKK water resistant zippers that you would find on our backpack, the same reprieve recycled water bottle material. That's a two and a half gig network card, by the way, that you're holding. Yeah. Is this for the framework? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, I think just USB-C to network. And so you could use this on anything really, Yeah. but it's made for the framework. Yeah, laptop, it pops so it in. slots in nicely. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. That's cool to have, because you could use it for your actual laptop or anything else, really. Did someone steal my M.2 SSD? That's just an external audio, like, sound card. This thing is actually sweet, because it just seems to work on everything. Yeah. I've used this a yeah. bunch. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, yeah, USB to just 3.5. And it, it literally seems to work with everything. Some of my tools aren't in there. My uh, my pin removal tool is not in there. Oh, oh, they are in there. Oh, who put those in there? 
Oh, okay, that's great. I don't want to yeah, really they, take all those they out. They were playing around with my stuff a little bit for the shoot, but so I have like jeweler screwdrivers, and then I have like an ATX pin removal tool, Molex pin removal Some tool. Spare like water cooling fittings. Yeah, every once in a while, you never know if you're going to need a fitting or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, do you want to just kind of spread it for me? <laughs> uh, not that part. Okay, that ooh, that's very awkward. Uh, okay, I want to see like the uh, the little the little pockets on the outsides. The oh oh. Like this? No, no. I, oh, uh, you mean this? Yeah, on the outside edges. Yeah, or the in, inside of the outside. I don't know how well that's oh going to show. Um, there's okay. So there's a pouch here. Yeah. Can, is that show yeah, uh, the elastic ones. The, the elastic that are ones on the orange. Here. There you go. Pockets. Oh. So there's lots of pockets. Oh, there's an SSD in there. You, know, you never know when you're going to need an SSD. <laughs> that actually comes up a lot for me. But if that you just sense. give them a bit of a better angle so they can yeah, there we go so, so there's, there's like three pouches back here and then the other side has something similar pen holder Pencil or pen holders there yep. and then on this side. There's like just a bunch of loops. Yeah, brother So we we have some loops We did a lot of internal polling finding out what people wanted to be able to carry around with them It fits perfectly in the bottom of the backpack obviously with a water bottle next to it uh, Yeah, it's okay. We're back to the main camera now. I think you've made your point, but yeah it's a tech pouch, really high quality materials, and it's on lttstore.com. And does it does it fit in a specific spot in the backpack? Yeah, it just sits at the very bottom of the main bag of holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a couple other LTT store things to discuss, but people are I, asking for dimensions of the pouch. Is that not just on the store? I hope it is. Is it not? Uh, okay, we should get that updated for you all. Um, Oh, man. I would look forward to that being in the product information in the future. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be there very soon. 900D by 900D? I don't know what that what means. That? Man, what were the other things I was supposed to say about the store? Dan, do you remember? Stickers. Oh, yeah. Stickers. Where are the stickers? They were stickers. Oh, they're right here. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dan, yeah. back to the camera. We have a new 2023 sticker pack. So it's in the bonus bin, which are the, the free items that you guys can get on lttstore.com with your order. We, so we now have new stickers. That one's really fun. Save that one for last. Ah, Let's do all the other ones ah, first. No one gets to see it. We've got soon TM. Right, hold it next to your face. I'm holding it next to Luke's face. Hey, there we go. Soon TM. Oh, oh, we got the trust me bro guarantee. Yeah. Sarah was like, yeah. really? Really? I don't need to be that. Yeah, in he focus. doesn't need to just be in focus. The, just yeah, make yeah, the just make that in focus. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're hold good. On, hold on. You We've had got it there for a second. Oh boy. I've been trying to tell you. Can he do it? It's locked on your oh, face. Oh, it's locked on your face, Luke. It's locked on your face. Okay, why do you keep putting it over there? Okay, all right. <laughs> Trust me, bro, guarantee. <laughs> there we go. We've got LTT store dot is it calm? Is it calm? No one knows. Can't read it. This is the lab? Yeah. That's a cool reflective -y rainbow. Yeah, Sarah sticker. pushed hard for that design. She uh, she really likes it. Hey! Hey! Float plane sticker. Let's go. I think it's a little bit of an angle. Yeah. Yep. Nice. What uh, else you got? Little retro computer. Cool little little CRT. Uh, yep. Old school computer. Um, uh, oh, that's a bit of a throwback. Eggshell. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet. All uh, the memes from this year. Hot takes. A uh, little, little WAN show shout out for us. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. It's full of Very WAN nice. show shout outs. And the generic. Classic. Which did, is good. You, did you just call that the generic? What would you call it? LTT Circle logo, obviously. Generic LTT Circle this logo. This is the best one, though. This was brilliant. This was Sarah's idea. I can't take any credit for it. Um, it's blank. That's actually pretty sweet. So it's, it's, a, it's a window, like, a, like an Explorer window, and it's a tech tip. So you can write any tech you can put tip you want. That you want. Yeah. 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 So cool, right? And based on the material, I don't want to say that you could. I think you, you can erase it. You might be able to erase yeah. it. Yeah. So you could like update your tech tip. That's actually pretty sweet. That's a good idea. Those are um, cool. Those are all good. The last big update is we finally have some bloody printed shirts in stock. Let's go. Screwdriver t-shirt is back. Case t-shirt is back. The one I'm wearing today, the display... Um, Panel layers mm -hmm, mm -hmm, shirt mm -hmm. is back, like one. and so is the headphone shirt. There you go. So we finally, finally have some shirts back in stock. By the way, if you were signed up to get a notification when these came back in stock and you got like seven notifications, let support know because we had an issue with that. So we actually turned off our back in stock notifications while we were trying to solve it. We're just going to have to make our own thing eventually. Oh, really? 
Probably. We Why can't Shopify plugins this? not just work? Some of them do. I don't feel like I'm asking for that much. Uh, some of them do. All right. Well, at any rate. Um, but we've had like other problems with it, and it's just getting kind of frustrating at this point. It's it's not like super high on the list, but I feel like someday it's it's gonna just yeah. All right. Well, hit Apparently me with a couple. Conrad's already fixed it, which is good. Okay. Hit me with a couple merch <clears throat> messages, Dan, and then we'll get into some more topics, and then we'll do some more merch messages. Maybe sure. we'll get some get some dinner. Do WAN show after hours? No, probably probably not. We, I think we could, might treat. We could wrap this up. Really? Now we're doing it. Yeah. Well, if we're gonna be here for like the next ten hours, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twenty four hour WAN show when? Yeah. I was gonna say that's why you have a producer. Someone so just can beat. Keep you fed. Someone just beat Ludwig's record, uh, his like subathon record, and I was thinking we should just do a like subathon WAN show where we just swap the hosts out. And the WAN show just keeps going. Yeah, the WAN forever. The, the WAN show never sleeps. Yeah. The WAN show never stops. Yeah. I, I got a question for you. If I buy you dinner, did you technically buy yourself dinner? No. Uh, if you expense it, then yes. Then yes. Ah, okay, that makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Yeah. All right. I got one here from Griffin. Hey guys, starting a new IT job next week, and I thought the screwdriver would be the perfect gift to myself. Any yeah. comment on why the tech pouch looks eerily similar to the Peak Design one? Um, honestly, we started from a very different place. I had never seen the Peak Design one until I saw people mention it in the, um, uh, in the, in the chat before the show. So I was like, oh, I will go look at this. A lot of times, like, there's, there's people that completely unrelated, like, pre-internet, they'll invent the same thing at the same time, different parts of the world. Calculus? I mean, I have, yeah, like I have no doubt that our designers probably looked at other options on the market. What is different about this one is that the layout of the inside is very much tailored to what Tech our stuff. team requested. Yeah. 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 Um, so we, like, we made sure that the... Uh, so here, hold on one sec. And a lot of it's like the materials involved, like it's the reprieve fabric again so it's made from water bottles so I just, i've always appreciated perfect uh personally so here's a bit of go. feedback that i gave them early on in the process i was like these pouches need to be able to hold like a gaming mouse not just a magic mouse um that was something that we observed from um some of the samples that we did bring in where i was like this is stupid like i can't even put a mouse in this thing how am i supposed to operate without a mouse also if you have an ltd backpack it like perfectly visually matches which yep. i think is cool I like the orange. I haven't looked at the peak one. I have no idea if they have like highly visible fabric. Pro it's on probably the inside. good. I've heard very, very good things about their stuff. Everyone that I know that has bought peak design stuff is very happy with it. Yep. So. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is LTT store is not. Um, I don't see us as like a bitter rival with anyone. You know, like just because we have a screwdriver, does that make us a Milwaukee competitor? Yeah. Like no, realistically, no. It's it's not our primary business. It's. Uh, you know, I think that we take a very different approach to merch. You know, I don't like calling it merch because yeah. I think they're yeah. products. You know, I don't think they're just merch. I don't think we just silkscreen our logo on things. But I don't think people uh, like I but, think with some creators merch, the driving idea behind buying their merch is just supporting the creator. I think with our stuff, which it also sucks to call merch. Yeah. Is you're buying good stuff. Yeah. And by the way. It also, We're building a lab. Yeah. Let's go. It also supports the like vision and direction of the company and all that kind of stuff. But you're 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 buying the stuff because it's actually just really good stuff. We shipped out the screwdriver and had like tool reviewers review it and it reviewed really well because we're trying to make really good stuff. Yeah. Not not because we're just trying to make random merch. We could have man, we could have made a screwdriver a lot the faster. The shirts are like great. I love our shirts. And they went through a lot of revision to get to a point where they're good. Yes. And Yada yada yada. Like it's it's not it's not just like puked out merch to in order to support a creator, which I'm not even dogging on. Nope. It's that's just fine. not it wasn't our approach. That's all. I have bought merch from creators with the sole idea of it supporting the creator. Yep. And I'm totally fine with that. I and think I only most ever did of the it shirts once. didn't survive a super long time, but like I was really doing it to support the creator. Yeah, my burnt face man um hoodie lasted pretty okay until i lost it so i don't know how long it would have lasted yeah 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 um we'll okay two more and then get back to yeah yeah, sure. yeah next up is from mike love this tech purse uh was there any follow-up to the uncensored wan show exploded monetization or anything excited to hit five hours on wan show tonight <laughs> no 
No, it, it monetization actually stayed active, even yeah. though we like cussed a bunch and all that. I was that. pretty surprised. Me too. I thought it was going to get age gated or something, but it just went. That was the one. That was the one where I was surprised that it was live. And I got caught totally off guard. Is that it? Yeah, yeah because I, I just sat there for so long at the beginning thinking, oh, it couldn't possibly have started yet. And then I realized that it was that the show was started. Yeah, I didn't yeah. remember it was that one. Yeah, I remember because because I had intended to start like swearing a bunch right the second the show started because I, I know that in the first little bit it matters more. And so some people had commented, oh, yeah, he probably waited because of what... No, I waited because my dashboard... Uh, usually has a, a 10 to 20 to even 30 second delay before it actually goes live, but it went live immediately that time, and I didn't realize. Okay, last one for this section is from Anthony. Linus, what is your biggest regret as far as decisions you've made for LMG? These are spicy. My goodness. Biggest regret. Uh... Not taking the offer. No. <laughs> No, no, I don't regret that actually. Uh, I, mean, I I worried I would. Uh, did I ever did I ever say how much the offer was? No. No. Oh. Well, it wasn't six figures. And it wasn't seven. <laughs> and it sure as hell wasn't five or under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot. It wasn't eight either. <laughs> So that should give you some idea. Yeah. Um, I have not regretted it for a moment. I, I think that the timing was perfect to, to take an offer. Um, we were having an absolutely, we were in the midst of an explosive it year was, of growth. It was pre-income from backpack and screwdriver. Yes, but, um, you know, we had let, we left the door open to kind of say, hey, here's how we're projecting that's going to go. And we had had some discussions about how that offer might change if they crushed it the way that we thought they could. Got it. Um, and so knowing that we were heading into a period, I think 2023, 2024 are going to be reinvestment periods. Uh, so if we were looking for an exit, um, 2022 was the year to do it because we were hockey sticking like absolute crazy uh, lots of cool stuff on the roadmap but the costs for that cool stuff hadn't started to hit us yet uh, like building out the lab has been phenomenally expensive honestly like if you bought a screwdriver if you bought a backpack if you uh sent any kind Thanks. of merch message if you any anything anything subscribe on float yeah if you subscribe on float plane you're a huge part of of why this this vision is happening because um, well, because we couldn't do it <laughs> otherwise, it's that simple, right? Um, so if we wanted to take an offer, that would have been the time to do it, knowing that we were going to be heading into a couple of years that we're not going to see profits grow, uh, maybe even shrink. Right now, we are, we are down year over year in terms of profitability. Don't worry, we're fine. Everything is fine. We're still profitable, but we're down compared to last year. Um, and that's even, even before factoring in screwdriver and backpack, right? And so because the kinds of companies that like acquire, you know, pieces and build portfolios are looking not just at your, your, your like some multiple of your EBITDA, um, it's, it's what kind of multiple you get, right? The bigger, the, the growth they expect, the, 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 the bigger multiple you might get in terms of the valuation of your company. Yeah. So EBITDA would be like your earnings before taxes something something but basically like your 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 net income um and or your 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 net profit whatever whatever it is so so pretty much how much money you made so they will basically go okay that amount let's say times three or times five or times nine or, or whatever it is is how much we're going to offer for your company because we will expect that it will continue to make money and we will we will make that money back on our investment over some period of time and the the more your growth looks explosive the higher that offer because you could basically argue well yeah you sure you could give me 5x EBITDA today but but the earnings you're going to get in this next four or five years here is going to be so much more because we're growing like this so the time to take it was 2022 and the not time to take it is 2023 2024 because i i know i knew that that wasn't going to keep happening the way that it was um 
you know, obviously, if all goes according to plan, I'm going to look back at the 2022 offer and I'm going to say, well, I would have been an idiot to take that because my vision was great and, you know, we're worth twice as much or three times as much. But I know there's going to be a lull here. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, so I'm in it to win it. Um, and even if that doesn't happen, there's times that I've thought, you know, should I have, right? Like, should I have taken the bag and run, and, taken the ball and gone home? And to, to your credit, if you were just financially motivated, I mean, you said the amount of figures, right? I did, basically. You would have been chillaxing to the end of All days. All cool. Yeah. Sup what with some B ball outside of the school or yeah, whatever. Something like yeah. That. yeah. So like uh, clearly it's not just financial motivation. Um I don't, I've got unfinished business. I think that's a big part of it. Um I don't think that the team would have been happy. Uh there's there's a lot that we could unpack. I don't think we're gonna talk in detail. There's about a lot this of right different now. angles, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um but the bottom line is that would have been the time to take it. I forget what the question was. Uh, what's your biggest regret? Oh, I yeah. jokingly pointed that out. Yeah, so that was obviously not no, good. I have not regretted it. Um, it's hard for seeing where we came from and where we are today. How on earth can I possibly say Dude. regret about any of it? Part of my, I guess we might get into this later, but I've been yeah. reorganizing and, and getting rid of a bunch of old stuff and whatnot. And I was finding some old hard drives that I had stashed away and making sure yeah. that I had all the data off them yeah, on yeah. my NAS. And, and basically in every case I, I did, but I was still sorting through old stuff and I found my like archived forum folder. Oh. And I found a bunch of like, like when my Twitter account passed 1,337 followers, I have like oh, a screenshot cool. of when it got exactly then. I have a bunch of the screenshots from the, the V Bulletin days. Oh, of, of the, the forum. forum. Nice. Um, I have this screenshot from when uh, Windspeed and I were dealing with a certain server host that I'm not going to point out mm. because we we were uh, we requested an IP KVM and they hooked it up to someone else's server and then gave us the access to it. So we had full direct <laughs> control over someone else's server. <laughs> And I screenshot the communication log of Winspeed and I being like, guys, you need to take this away from us. What are you doing? <laughs> I've had a bunch of old stuff like that. That was that was quite the the memory lane to go down. The the old original design of the forum when it yeah. finally came over to IPS, like yeah. all this other kind of stuff. It was very cool. Oh, screenshots from Razor's like Discord competitor. Oh, comms. Yeah. Good old comms. Man, yeah, there's a, it's been, yeah, it's been a ride. It's been a ride. <laughs> you know yeah. what? Okay. Um, I don't think we would have done the sponsored video on the Facebook portal. Or was it something? I don't know. There was some, like, I don't, nah, I don't know. Is Facebook even the worst of the tech giants? They're all just sort of terrible. Um, There's a lot of stuff where the question is biggest regret. I could easily come up with regrets. Yeah, but for to to single something out and go biggest regret. Oh man, that's, that's tough. And it's that's tough. Regrets are a hard thing too because like, yes, maybe not doing that thing would have been better. Yeah, it like, implies you, you would have done it differently. Exactly. With all the information that I have now, would I do that differently? Like, yeah, but also it clearly didn't hurt us that much, so maybe not. And it's I don't not know. a super applicable real question because you didn't have all that information. So, like, what? And even the times that we have financially engaged with Facebook, we haven't done anything that that breaches our in, internal ethics guidelines. Like, we didn't, we never said anything, or external ones. We never said anything we didn't believe. We specifically in the, I think it was the Quest One, we did a sponsored video. We specifically told Facebook, look, we are simply not doing this if we can't address the uh, requirement of a Facebook account and like these things. We're not going to gloss over these. And we held, our, we, held our, we held the line. We drew our line in the sand. And, and we, if companies are okay with that line, then like who then cares? Like, yeah, then from my point of view, I'm sitting here going, okay, so you want to basically pay me to make the video I would have made anyway? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've done a lot of those over the years. Sure. Uh, a really good example of that was the Micron factory tour. Like, 
<laughs> silly micron. I would have come here regardless. Yeah, they yeah. didn't. Have, they didn't have to give me any money, but yeah. I still. I had the business team. I was like, no, no, grind them, grind them, <laughs> put the screws to them, because like I'm running a business here, right? I can't. You have to do that. Kind I, of I stuff. can't pay Luke and Dan <clears throat> in a great experience that I had in Idaho. Right, like, like let me let can I, I mean, there's been some times. You know what else I found on that server? Uh oh, were there pay stubs? Yeah, oh no, I don't take responsibility for the NCIX ones, so that was not my fault. In in November, before we broke off, okay, not my problem. So, yeah, it's, it's yes. NCIX days. Good, I have an email sent to you yeah. because, as much as it was NCIX, you were my boss. Um, but I have an email sent to Linus uh, with an invoice and a request of like, could this be paid relatively soon? Because <laughs> I haven't been paid in two and a half months <laughs> and I need money. <laughs> and I looked at the invoice and I remembered that I used to get paid $5 per LTT video. <laughs> That is not my fault. Actually, though. And I fed him. You did? That was out of pocket. <laughs> that invoice was genuinely hilarious to, like, read over. <laughs> and I would like to, I would like to make another point. Has a paycheck from Linus Media Group Incorporated ever been late? No. Okay. And and Dan, I, I have... late paychecks? Uh, never, never, never. Yeah. You can say if they've been late. Well, I don't get paychecks, so you know. Well, okay, yeah, we do direct deposit now. We used to yeah. do paycheck. We did yeah. paychecks for yeah. a shockingly long yeah, time. Yeah, Vaughn didn't actually. want to give it up because it like costed like a it dollar more or yeah. something. <laughs> so funny. I remember just being like, "Come on." Oh no. But yeah, it was it was five bucks per per LTT, <laughs> and if I remember, that's Canadian rubles too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, I don't it's know. funny now. It wasn't that funny then. Yeah, I remember there was one oh, time no. that Linus called me. I'm sure you remember this. Um, <laughs> telling me that, like, they were going to have to do something different with the taxes that were on my thing. Oh, okay. I don't remember the exact details, but I remember I, like, freaked out. I, like, broke down because at this point in time, I was eating two meals a day and it was very often that one of those meals was a single bowl of nongshim ramen yeah uh and i was like skimping on toothpaste i was stealing toothpaste and food from my parents house when i could yeah and i was sleeping on a cot oh, man. somewhat illegally because my ex-roommates were renting literally a cot in the living room to me because I couldn't afford a room anymore. Yeah. And the landlord didn't actually even know I was there. Was that the place you were living where there was the guy that played cod zombies and smoked pot and that was basically all he did? Yeah. How did he have more money than you? Because he had a job at, uh, what's that auto parts store that will like drive Lord parts? Co? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He had a job at Lordco. Okay. Like a part time job at Lordco, like massively out earned. <laughs> what I was doing, <laughs> but like at that point, I don't know. At that point in time, I now, was. What the hell were you doing? No wonder your parents told you you were an idiot for hanging around with me. <laughs> um, I don't know. I saw the vision, and at that point in time, I could do it. I don't think I could live like that anymore. I me mean, neither. Like I, just... I couldn't do what we did ten years ago. Yeah, I know. It's it's a young person's game doing that. Like now, like now, the game is putting up moats. Right? Yeah. We're, we're in the castle. So it's like, all right. We have to do our best. Build moats. To do the best we possibly can. Yeah. So to that make it so that, so that yeah. people who can work 18 hours a day still can't make up the difference. Whether it's building building a team, that's a moat because that's more ex there's more expertise in this building than any one person could possibly hope to have in 50 lifetimes. Like there really is. So that's a moat. Uh, equipment like l lab equipment that's a moat you know a newcomer can't afford it right uh, the business team the business relationships that's another moat because you know even if we have a rough month in terms of views we can count on those relationships and those negotiations to go kind of go hey look uh, no you guys need to still pay the same rates we're gonna get our feet back under us don't worry we got this right we can buy time essentially um, so we're put, yeah. So we've we've got we've got moats, but pulling all nighters, 
that ain't a moat that we can build anymore. Jaden says in full plain chat, in quotes, how did he make more money than you? And then in quotes again, he had a job that paid minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's literally true. I think that's literally what happened. <laughs> but I don't know. I we We were communicating pretty early on about like, we should take this yeah. to another level. Like this yeah. is not the goal. The original idea was that I would work, I've said this a bunch of times on the Wayne Show. The original idea was that I would work with Linus four to eight hours a week. And then within like a week of working together, we were like, uh, <laughs> we could crank more. We could yes. do more with this. We could yeah. release more episodes. We could go to a daily release schedule. We could do this other thing with NCX. Yeah. We could include this like tech linked thing, or I don't remember what it was called, net linked at that time, net linked weekly or whatever. We could start doing these other things. We could start pushing further, pushing more. And then I kind of saw like, you know what, I think this kind of is the future of, of media. And I think we're kind of on the cusp of it. Yeah. This is not exactly what I thought I was gonna do yeah but like me neither I kind of want to go this road it seems more interesting and then just yeah. I, I was at an age where I could do it I could deal with those types of problems one of the benefits was that Linus was at least to some level okay with me literally falling asleep at the job because I was still going to school full-time trying to study to keep good grades because yeah. when I first started working with Linus I was like very high, not necessarily top in my class. I was top in my class in one or two classes, but at BCIT I had a huge course load. So definitely not all of them, but I was doing very well in school. Um, so I was trying to keep that up and then working with you was supposed to be four to eight hours, which would have been sustainable, but then we 10 X it. And mm. then that stopped being sustainable very quickly. Mm. So mm. I was literally sleeping like behind the camera, nothing. So I would, I would be, so the biggest downtime I would have in the day outside of like literally one to three hours a night of sleeping was like I'd press record and then there's nothing for me to do for like five minutes. So I would literally fall asleep in the chair. Yeah. And then he'd have to like yell at me and I'd wake up and stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's easier now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a uh, totally different Some world. people are asking what I mean by moats. It's, it's barriers to entry. So it's, it's competitive advantages. It's ways that we can take what we're good at and compete with our strengths against what someone else's strength might be. And their strength might be that they don't need sleep and they don't have children or, you know, whatever else the case may be. Um, by the way, Dan, I do monitor float plane chat. No, you don't. <laughs> what do you say? People are asking, I think, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just ignoring I'm just tuning them. in here for a second. Uh, people are asking about the Christmas album remaster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Dan replied to someone, <laughs> I have decided to do something worse with it. Okay, sir, we've been through this. You are not deciding what happens to the Christmas album. I have decided that the Christmas album is going to be left dead and buried. And then Dan goes, I can't say anything. Linus is here. You've said <laughs> enough. And yes, I am here. And I see it. Uh, how many Christmas albums did we sell last week? Thousands. That oh, is... Uh, last week specifically, I don't actually know the exact number. Um, but I know that at, as of right now, we are in the thousands of totals sold. And it's definitely a ton more than it was before. To the point where if I'm correct, I sent you a message. I think we've revenued over four grand on it. Linus Tech. Linus Tech Tips. Christmas album. I think someone put it on Spotify, and I actually don't think it was us. <laughs> okay. Someone's selling it on Bandcamp. Like, yeah, I think someone pirated this and put it on Bandcamp. <laughs> I don't think this is us. I doubt it's us, because uh, I'm pretty sure we only sell it through the forum. Yeah. I give you my permission to go download the pirated one. I mean, we're going to pull it down at some point, so go fast. But I, don't pay money for it, please. <laughs> oh, A-Prime says we have apparently actually had one late paycheck. It was by a day or a couple of days. I can't remember the exact time. It has been years. All right. It's well, been years. Apparently we've had one. I'd have to check because that might have been, been unique to A-Prime, though, because I think the last time I checked with Vaughn, she told me that we hadn't been... We hadn't been late on a pay period. If we get to 2K purchases, can Dan remaster it? Because it's currently at 1333. Well, ideally, no one buys it. Yeah. 
That would be the best. I just told you guys. I just gave you my blessing Bonus to go item. download no, the pirated one. We don't LTT store. Everything on it has to be good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not going on LTT store. We can't. There can be garbage no, on the forum. They want it to be a bonus bin item. No. Even that, like, is no. my version going to be good enough for the store? You're not going to have a version, Dan. We've been through this. <laughs> All right, one last merch message, message, and then we'll get into some topics here. Okay. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, this one's from Austin. We know a lot about your house, Linus, but Luke, what is your favorite part of your home? Uh. Yeah. Is it the is it the leaking it. plumbing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or the uh, stuffy upstairs sleeping area, uh, or the um, the the AC, the AC mini split yeah. that leaks if you leave it on overnight. Could the it only be, time I would want it to be on. Could it be the? Um, hmm. Let me think. <laughs> he's he's cat. He's had kind of bad luck. Yeah. To be perfectly honest with Got you. Got a bit of a lemon. Um, um, <laughs> uh, so just for you guys. If you happen to see Luke's place for sale at some point, don't buy it. <laughs> don't worry, you'll find you'll now. find some sucker to buy it, Luke. Uh, but if you're shopping in the Metro I'm Vancouver not very area, comfortable. just ask the realtor. Hey, does the seller's <laughs> name happen to be Luke Lafreniere? <laughs> and if they say yes, look, you guys are gonna know, but no one else will know, Luke. It's okay. You guys are going to know. If he says yes, you just say, thank you very much. J James like, you have a mini split? Jealous. Don't be that jealous. I can't use it. I've brought in three different people to try to fix it. No one can fix it. It just leaks all the time. It just leaks. It only leaks. And people are like, oh, have you cleaned the filters? Yes! <laughs> it just leaks. <laughs> It's in the bedroom. The only time I would want it on is when I'm sleeping, meaning it's going to be on for uh, eight hours, mm -hmm. ideally. If you leave it on for that long, it leaks. It just leaks. And then I would need to spend like an insane amount of money to get a new one because mm. they're really expensive. Mm -hmm. So then it's just like, well, I don't really want to do that. Well, I'll tell you what. If you move... <sighs> We will, we will, we will do, we will do like uh, cool, cooling DIY cooling round two. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Right, so, but so, we'll only cool your computer. We're gonna cool the inside <laughs> of your computer case with like a full size air conditioning. Okay, unit. so I've wanted to do it for a while actually. I'm gonna pivot us to a new topic then because sure. I think I would need that to use what I'm currently using. Really? The Radeon card is so hot. Oh, yeah. So we're working on AMD Challenge right so now. so much heat. Even compared to your SLI setup? Come on, When's that can't be right. Had... No, the dual 1080s? Not even close. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like this, it might... Ugh, no, I don't think it's the position so much. So you know where it's currently mounted. It's in the videos. People can see it. It's just like sitting on top of my computer. So yeah. it does plume the heat up. Yeah, I wonder it if the directionality. The and then plumes out. But my legs are just like cooking all the time. Yeah, because that, of that makes thing. sense. It's brutal. But I mean, in the other, with the 1080s, it would have gone out the side of the case. Because I had the glass off. I was amazed by how well heat rising worked. Like, obviously, I've known heat rises. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Hot air rises. Sure, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when I tried to do that video using the mining PC for heat, I just, I don't know. I just, I underestimated just oh, how yeah, it's buoyant. Like gonna go away. Yeah, like, yeah. like fast. So I mounted it right above the monitor, kind of blowing at me with fans, <clears throat> you know? And what I realized, like, later was like later on in the video i don't know if it actually made it into the final cut but it was pretty much boomeranging like it it, it would not go you couldn't force it down it's, it, it's like trying yeah. to push bubbles down in water yeah and i didn't realize it would be that extreme i just i don't know never really i just never really thought about it which and makes you haven't actually done something like that yeah you probably wouldn't necessarily realize that I, makes sense i just didn't really think about it and so you know one of the things that i again it was i i mentioned it in the video, I don't think it made it into the final cut, but I said what I should have done was mounted under the desk because then the heat would get trapped by the yeah. desk and leak up around so that's, me. That's literally how. So that's anyway. what you're doing, and yeah. that's probably why the case wasn't as bad. Because yeah, if it's blowing it out the back, it's probably going like straight up well, and not hitting you. I had the the 1080s that I had were like those triple cooler. I'm trying to remember Strix. Yeah, whatever. So it wasn't necessary. But your but your case. 
would have had airflow. So, yeah, I had the side of the case the the side of the case off though. Even then though, there would be like a suction. Like it would Oh yeah, because the front fans. That exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it would go at the back. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it I really don't think it's to do with the actual thermal output. I think it's probably just airflow optimization. That's definitely fair. Yeah. Uh speaking of which, the um the case. You said case and it reminded me of this. Again, I'm reorganizing things. Guess what I dug out of the the I'm gonna say garage. It's like a slot in the wall because I live in an apartment, but guess what I dug out of the garage? You don't still recently. have your stupid aquarium, do you? Uh not that one. The really that ITX what like leftover one I that have you got? The two. I believe it's two remaining. Mineral oil cases. I've got them. This is starting to feel a little bit predestined. <laughs> Because you'll never believe what happened earlier this week. Well, we uploaded that video with the tour of the lab. Okay. And I mentioned like mineral oil cooling for some reason. Either it was in that video or is it? What? No, it was on a live stream. Sorry. It was on a recent live stream. Someone sent a merch message asking about mineral oil cooling when we did that, um, that build stream. And somehow a ball got rolling internally without me knowing about it where we For started mineral oil? no where we start because i said look i think we've said everything we have to say about mineral oil if we were to do a follow-up with like floor inert or something like that oh. you know maybe take it to the next level yeah. you know maybe we'd revisit it but even then you can't get these aquarium cases anymore because of a patent troll blah 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 so someone internally starts trying to source floor inert and i'm sitting here going Okay. That's really expensive. And really hard to get. Yeah. Apparently, you just, like, they just don't even make it anymore, basically. Oh, there's some, there's like a newer... So, then the conversation somehow made its way to uh, Jake Danes from the lab, and he's like, oh, no, not Florida. You want this one. Yeah. And it's like for submersion cooling for yes. like mining and GPUs and stuff. Yeah. And it even, there's like even a cleaner. That you yep. can use to get everything back to pristine. Yeah, he's, he's clearly up to speed. And on it's this, a couple hundred bucks right. uh, per five gallon pail, which is like it's expensive compar compared to Florinert. Nothing. Florinert was absurd. Yeah. Mineral oil was cheap, relatively. Yeah. And then this thing is it's expensive, but it's not like it's closer to mineral oil than it is to Florinert, yes. but it's in the middle. Florinert, you were going to spend like thousands. And so I'm sitting here going, we've got cases, <laughs> we've got fluid. <laughs> Am I going to be able to avoid this? <laughs> it's happening. I'll tell you what. What? Here's the deal. Okay. We'll build one, but you have to give me back your old computer and you have to daily drive it. Wow. Wow. Don't know if I want to do that. It'll be top spec, new spec. Oh, yeah, but it's going to be in oil. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to pull the audience. Should he do it? Should he not? I forget how to set up poles. New top spec in oil is like actually quite questionable because the thermal well, it output... won't be oil. It'll be that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's designed for GPUs and thermal stuff. fluid, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. So my look, comment is look. Look at this guy. Just answer the question. You want me to do it because you know it's going to be terrible. Yeah, I this know. Is, he's not, that's where the pressure is coming from. I just want to make sure that everyone understands. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they want it for the same reason. Floatplane chat is unanimous here. Of Let's course they are. go. Because it's terrible. What if I use it as a workstation because I'm going to be here locally again nope. soon? Has to be at home. Has to be at home. No, we Why? will do Luke personal rig update mineral oil edition. It can't even fit all my like drives. Is it? Is is it the ITX one? Uh, I didn't actually look inside the box. If I remember correctly, I have two tanks. I I don't think either of them are like ATX tanks. Well, like how much capacity? I didn't. It's just in the shipping box. No, I mean how much hard drive capacity do you have? I currently have two very large hard drives. Mm -hmm. And I have three, like, uh, uh, standard two and a half inch SSDs, three, four, okay. three or four. And then I have two NVMEs. Why do you need so many drives? I have a lot of drives. What the, yeah, I, no, no, I didn't ask if you have a lot of drives. I asked, why do you need them? Uh, I save a lot of stuff. You have a NAS. Yep. I do. The NAS is huge. I, I have lots of things, okay? Yeah, no, I, 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 I clearly. Um, <laughs> you're leaving it there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
sakes. <laughs> How much total space is that? It's a lot. <laughs> No, Each no. one of the hard drives is like 10, 10 terabytes. My deal stands. We will we will load up everything you could possibly need for game storage. We will load you up with enough storage for everything you could possibly need for actual local storage. And we will upgrade the NAS to make up for any space you lose in the desktop. The NAS is all 10 terabyte drives. The NAS also has to be mineral oil cooled. <laughs> That is so dumb. Okay, wait, wait, what? Uh, so it's so we gonna use be both all tanks. SSD? We use both tanks. It's all gonna be solid state. Uh, well, no, we could. So we you're could... gonna replace 80 terabytes of hard drives with solid state drives? No, no, we NAS? could use a PCIe riser out to an external hard drive enclosure. What is the point? <laughs> oh my god. The suffering is the point. <laughs> God. <laughs> people oh, people no horrible. longer think you should do it. <laughs> yeah, Actually, no, Floatplane does. Floatplane is ready. <laughs> <laughs> mineral oil backup. <laughs> oh, this All is right. so dumb. No, no. The NAS does not have to be mineral oil cooled. Yeah. But but we will expand the NAS to How? the point where what? Well, get more hard drives. What? It's full. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, NAS it's is like can... it's. I, I don't have a dedicated, like, actually proper. That's fine. System it'll just for it. it's it'll, just the Synology NAS. It'll include a NAS. That's fine. That's fine. So we will make sure we will make you whole in terms of storage. That's my commitment. <laughs> Let me even see what the state of them all right. are first. All right, all right. Yeah, you don't have to make a decision now. You can be a little. Oh, I'm in the, I don't know. Having don't a know about having it. a submersion cooled system again could be kind of cool. I'm a little bit worried in an apartment if there's a leak, it could actually be like <laughs> super bad. I mean, that sounds like a Luke problem to me, not a Linus problem. So you know. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't. Again, I don't even know what tanks they are. If it's genuinely just one ITX tank, because I'm pretty sure at least. I think there's at least one ITX tank. I think they're both ITX. Is it two ITXs? I think it might be. I, I honestly don't they, remember. Basically, Puget gave us the last of their tanks, and I think we we used the last ATX one to do the last build we did, which so. we eventually like sold on Facebook Marketplace or something like that because we were tired of just having it around and carrying it places. <laughs> um, and then I think you were like, can I just like have these ITX ones? And I was like, realistically, I'm never going to do anything with these. Just take it and go. Um, I mean, he stole it, rather, is how that probably went down. <laughs> no, uh, no it's, it, if I remember correctly, you like didn't know what to do with them. Yeah, no, no. And I, I was like, I I'll take it. And I was, was just like, memeing with yeah, the whole stealing things from the office thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's the deal. I mean, there's some of that. I was cleaning up. I found a few of those. <laughs> We're a lot more on top of that stuff now. We have like a whole inventory system and asset tags and everything. But uh, things were a little more loosey goosey when people were not being like paid well. Um, you know, it, it is it is what it is. <laughs> we we made do with what we had. There's a few things like I found a pair of headphones that I remember I got because instead of like expensing a bunch of stuff, I just like got the headphones. Yeah, there was, yeah, like, yeah. Some stuff like that. There's, there like... was some loosey goosey stuff. I mean, another thing too is when we were a much smaller team. If, you know, a Luke was just like, yeah, I need a new mouse. Uh, I didn't have to worry about 98 other people coming to me and saying, well, why does Luke get a new mouse? There's it's so many easier to deal with. Yeah, there's the so scale many gets a little wacky things. You just like it, 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 it really does come back to like grade school rules. Did you bring enough for the whole class? No. OK, well, then you can't. You, then we can't. Yeah. That simple. Yeah. Um, but yeah. If it's just ITX cases, I honestly don't think I'm that. I don't think I'm going to do it. You don't think you're going to do it? Not, really? Not for just an ITX. Like, but, well, yeah, but it'll be like top top spec, top spec part ITX. Part of the problem is the volume of the tank. Top kek ITX. Because they, even though you're potentially putting more in it, I'd have to look at the properties of the new coolant. Because I know it like exists, sure. but I haven't actually planned right, on doing a right. build in it. I expect an answer next week. Oh my goodness, okay. The people <sighs> expect an answer I'll next week. To, I'll, talk to, uh, I'll talk to Jake. I'm All sure right. he knows he's more up on the current stats um i don't even remember was this a merch Luke message oil pc linus and i have this agreement from ages ago um like pre linus media group ages ago um 
back from when I was paid less than minimum wage, where he 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 had like upgraded my system. I got a forty eighty. Four eighty, you mean? Four eighty. Yep, yeah. Sorry, a four eighty, and I don't remember what else was in there. But it was like my first system upgrade after the mineral system. It was in an eight hundred D. Nice. I got a four eighty. I don't remember what processor it was. Probably something decent. It was like a twenty six hundred K or something. It was it was like solid. It was all like good stuff. Yeah. It was a big upgrade from what I had at the time. Um, and then I was I, I don't remember how we got in the conversation, but we were standing outside of the badminton center that you wanted to go to that night because I needed a ride home and he wanted to play badminton first. So I used to study. I would study on the couch at his badminton. We center. didn't actually do that that many times. I think that only happened a handful of times. Yeah, I honestly didn't care. I just needed to study and there was a place to study there. So it honestly didn't make a difference to me. I had my laptop and my textbooks anyway. So like what, it, it's basically the same thing as being at home. Um, and we had this conversation, and he was basically like, as long as you work with me, I'll make sure that you have a good computer. And I was like, I'm holding you to that. And now it's been 12 years or something, <laughs> and it's paying off. Let's go. Except now it might turn into an oil rig, which is concerning. But we'll see. <laughs> and uh, yes, Linus, this was a merch message. Oh, okay. A-Prime's uh, all upset. He's like, where's my oil PC? Come on. Come on. I have made no such agreement with you. He says, screw that agreement. Yeah. Yeah, screw your agreement. This was the uh, the worst part of Luke's house. SS Thom asks, any chance of a badminton match with Stephen He for a creator clash or a Dennis Feitlich thing? I really want it to happen, so I'm posting this again. Does Stephen even play badminton, or are you profiling? Because I couldn't find any reference to him playing badminton at all. I'm not. I'm not putting up to a poll, guys. You guys don't actually get to like decide that I have to do this. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> All right. Uh, what other topics do we want to talk about today? I also have to make sure it's like gonna be okay for the birds. Yeah. Okay. That yeah, should be fine. Like, there's certain things that I like actually have to sure. go figure out. That's fine. That's and not everything is fine, right? Because like, there's certain yeah. chemicals in the environment that'll just kill them, and it's like it might not be harmful to humans, but it might be harmful to them. Like, there's I gotta figure stuff out. Nokia hypes their super fixable phone. Mm, yeah. I haven't gotten a chance to have a look at this yet, but uh, Pocket Lint has, uh, has an article about this. Let's go have a look. It's pretty low spec. Like I think describing it as entry level is definitely accurate. I will say though that we're in an era of phones where I don't think that's actually gonna bother that many people. It's it's pretty low spec. I just saw it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping for a little more than that. Buddy but. immediately backtracks. Um, <laughs> I got down to the display and hardware section. I was just like, ooh. Recycled plastic rear, IP52 protection. Uh, let's talk about the specs a little bit. 6.5 inch, 1600 by 720 pixels, 90 hertz refresh rate. You know what? Is that a longer conversation here? Would you rather have 1080p at 60 hertz or 720p at 90? With how I currently use my phone, honestly, 720 at 90. Really? Yeah, I think so. Because it's almost all like text communication. I don't, it doesn't need to be. I don't care. Yeah. But like, it's not sharp. Like 720, the difference between 720p and 1080 is a lot bigger than the difference between 1080 and I, 1440. This is going to be a first world problem. I haven't experienced 720 on a phone in a hot minute. Yeah, it's... So maybe I don't know. Not great. Yeah. But yeah. then 90 hertz really does make things feel more responsive, it's, even when you're dealing with and slower hardware. Usually, text communication on my phone, I just, I'm just trying to go fast. Like, yeah. Yeah, and it feels, feels better yeah. when you're typing. Yeah, um, yeah that's, uh, that's a tough one. Anyway, sorry, you were telling the specs. Uh, yeah, unit SOC T606, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 or 128 gigs of storage, plus a micro SD slot. Thank you. Uh, what the heck is a T606? I'm looking this up. Tiger T606 processor, entry level octa core SOC with two ARM A75s at up to 1.6 gigahertz. <laughs> Blazing Ooh. speeds <laughs> and six efficient A55 cores that up cores it up to 1.6. That is not a fast chip. Nope. Okay, carry on. 5,050 milliamp hour battery. That's a big battery. This thing will last for like three days on battery though. 20 watts charging. Okay, that's fine. Whew. It will take a while to charge that big battery at 20 watts though. Um, I don't really mind that. 
if it's a huge battery, it takes long to charge. I feel like it might just extend the life of it because you're going to sit there with it plugged in 100% less often. Yeah, I guess that's fair. With my usage, I wouldn't mind that, personally. I'm trying to find any sort of... We deserve a poll. You deserve nothing! <laughs> I'm trying to find any insight into what exactly makes it repairable. So some of the ease of repair apparently... Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. Uh, a new battery and all the tools. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to read the thing. So iFixit is partnering with Nokia yeah. on the creation of the G22, this phone that is aiming for a price of $170, which is a lot more reasonable uh, for the spec and compared to some of the other more open and repair-oriented phones that we've seen in the past. It's designed to be easy to use and inexpensive to repair, and iFixit will sell repair kits for the battery display rear panel and the USB-C module, which are four of the most common components to break in typical use. At for, and they will sell them for at least five years. That's super cool. But will it get software updates for five years? Hmm. Uh, a new battery and all the tools to replace it will cost you 30 US dollars, and it should take about 10 to 15 minutes for a typical user to complete the repair. The most expensive part is apparently the touchscreen at 55. By the time you're spending $55 on a touchscreen, couldn't it be 65 and be 1080p? I, I got to kind of, I got to kind of wonder about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, some of the ease of repair comes from the fact that this is an inexpensive phone with inexpensive parts, and that ease of disassembly has a direct trade-off with modern waterproofing measures. However, That's Nokia true. has genuinely eliminated several barriers to removing the back of the device, and it retains its IP52 waterproof rating even after the back has been replaced. So IP52 is not watertight, but it can take the odd accidental spray of water. They're only providing three years of security and operating system updates. So even though you can get parts for five, it's three years. And I got to imagine that three years is from launch, yeah. not from when you buy it. So yeah. not from when they stop selling it. Um, man, I'd love to see an actual compelling repairable phone. Because on the one hand, I want to look at this and go, progress! But on the other hand, I'm looking at it going, this is this is like this is like a half measure, right? Yeah. This is like coming out and being like, <clears throat> um, nobody. Yeah, we made a repairable phone and nobody wanted it, so clearly the market has chosen non-repairable phones. No, the market chose the only options that it actually has, and I don't know that for a lot of people this is a truly viable option. What what minimum spec would it need to be for you to think it would be a viable option? Man, you know, I would have said something like Note Nine. But I've been using it lately just to listen to uh, music when I'm uh, riding on my bike. And uh, it's pretty slow. It's, it's slowed down. Um, I'd say There's as, some arguments that people might make about planned obsolescence stuff that doesn't yeah. have to do with the actual speeds and feeds of the device, but more has to do with like different certain updates that might actually intentionally slow it down from the manufacturer side. Ars Technica apparently ripped into it. It's 39 steps to replace the screen. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, that doesn't need to be the case. I, yeah. Why doesn't it just use screws? You need to hold the back panel on. Like, why does, why does everything need to be clips and, and clips and glue? And I don't remember what your question was. I'm sorry. What, what would the... Oh, right. I would say if it's three-year-old flagship tier performance... I would consider that to be more than acceptable, but I feel like phones like computers have gotten to the point where, A, um, the improvements generation over generation are not that big anymore, meaning yeah. that you can use three-year-old hardware you know, really, really easily and have a really great experience with it, but also, B, it means that the value of that three-year-old hardware isn't dropping the way it used to. Yeah. Like, you look at the way PC hardware is plummeting right now, generation over generation, in terms of, of price. Like, you can get Ryzen 2000 stuff on eBay for, like, nothing. Ryzen 3000, very reasonable. Um, for a long time there, when Intel was releasing quad-core after quad-core after quad-core, you know, the 7700K comes out, and 4770Ks are like $10 cheaper on eBay. You know, 3770Ks are maybe $25 cheaper on eBay. And I feel like we're seeing that with phones, right? Like they're not dropping in value quite as fast yeah. within the software update period because that's a different kind of obsolescence. I like basically didn't even realize how old my phone was. Yeah. I only thought about it recently, but like I don't, it doesn't affect me. The battery is still in okay enough state that it lasts a day. So I just charge it at night, whatever. 
It's not the most efficient way because it hits 100% and sits there for a bit and stuff like that. But yeah. it's old. I'm not that worried about it at this point. Stuff like that. Um, but, like, it's fine. Yeah, I have some problems. It had a lot more problems when I first got it. But it received software updates and it fixed a lot of those problems. And now it's just like, I don't know. I use, what, like Slack, Teams, and Discord. That's like 90% of what I'm doing on it. The, the rest of it is like reading news or whatever. Yeah. Like it doesn't need to be super powerful for my use case. Sure, maybe some other people are doing more complicated things with phones. But not me, so I don't really care that much. But I do like get really frustrated the second it like slows down. Because I'm very often trying to do quick tasks. Since when a message replies something really quick. Yeah. And if it like chugs while doing that, I do get frustrated. So there is like a minimum level of performance yeah. that I want it to be. I at. doubt that this would be and satisfactory I think this for is me. too low. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Is there anything else that's uh, critical for us to... Oh, oh, announcements. I have a mock-up oh. for the screwdriver holster. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Where's the, the loop? Is it like a belt loop thing? So it's like a um, it's like a like a click, like a it's like a hinge. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And then it uh, it it has like a clicky thing, so you can adjust the angle. Oh, that's kind of neat. So if you oh, want it to kind of more neat. face forward for a yeah. crossbody draw, or so if you, you want yeah, it more you can like up your for draw. a. <laughs> I have amazing. been warned. That if we go hand stitched, this thing could cost like a hundred or even two hundred dollars. Uh, but the advantage of hand stitching is that if a stitch breaks, the whole thing doesn't come apart. So, like machine stitching for leather, um, is it leather? It's just black leather, it'll be leather. We're gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna go full grain, like, and and if we get it hand stitched, it'll probably have to be made in North America. So, this oh. thing could be extremely expensive. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a viable product, but this is the, this is the initial design. The cutout here is so that you can pop the screwdriver up from the bottom to make it easier to grab from the top. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. So you kind of pop it up and then, yeah, obviously that's a snap. Yeah. I I told the team, I was like, I want the snappiest snap. Like, just like, I want it to be ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think it should be silver actually. I'm going to, I'll talk to Matthew about it. He's the one. It'll be... It'll, it'll, mm, if we can find an alternative leather that is just as strong and durable, we will consider an alternative leather. But right now I can, I, I, I think it's probably going to be, um, cow, cow, out, outer <laughs> layer. <laughs> That sounds worse. I think it's going to be cow cow. <laughs> it's not that I hate cows. I do hate cows, but that's not why. It's just that leather is, you know, it's leather, man. Um, Someone said brass for the button. Ooh, I don't know. I'd want to match the finish of the of the silver shaft. Yeah. So I was I was yeah sounding at listening to the cost. I don't think this is really viable. But releasing one that was black and releasing one that was silver. Yeah. No, there will be one version. Them, <laughs> would, would have been pretty sick for people that got the black shaft screwdrivers, but yeah, the costing and stuff, you're only gonna have one version. So. I think it's gonna be a low vol, a low volume. And hey, the product. people with the black shaft screwdrivers, they'll be silver eventually. It's possible. <laughs> it's true what he says. It's possible that the uh, it's possible that the machine stitching will, will you know will find a place that you know the quality is like really good or whatever. But it seems quite likely right now that it's going to end up being hand stitched, and that means it'll end up being probably very expensive. Not because we're gouging, but because we unapologetically are just going to make the best products we can. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to buy them. You can see a lot of people are into the philosophy, and yeah. uh, thanks, Matthew L. Are, are 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 really enjoying the tech pouch. We've I've been kind of keeping my eye on it. A uh, lot of a lot of people are into the tech pouch. I'll I'll say that much. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, it's been a bit of a day for the store. It's um, not the cheapest way that you can have a bag of said size. Nope, not even a little. But it's really good. Yeah, there you go. Um, can we create a poll? Yes. We want to figure out how much of the total addressable market for lower body undergarments we're missing out on by only having boxer briefs. So is this question, what is your favorite? Yeah. What's your preference? 
Boxers or briefs? Or boxer briefs. So Luke's going to create a poll and hit up float plane, and I will move on to the next topic. What we currently have is boxer briefs, correct? Yes. Yeah. Ford is... Oh, this is awful. Ford is seeking a patent for a new system that would allow them to gradually shut off features in delinquent customers' cars, like seat controls, automatic locking, and windows, as well as air conditioning and the infotainment system. After enough missed payments, the car would simply drive itself away. Is this the most dystopian timeline, Luke? Yeah, it also sounds like so ripe for abuse. And I mean, hacking. seat controls, you could make a very strong argument for how dangerous having an imp improperly oh, yeah. adjusted seat could be. If you're sitting sure. too close or too far from the steering wheel, that could be a life or death issue. I mean, honestly, oh, man, you could say that about you almost anything. Automatic, automatic locking? locking? Yeah. So, okay, man, my, my aunt had the wildest experience downtown Vancouver. She's just driving, oh, and, and some tries to get into some car. lady just like got in her car. Yeah, like hey, I need a ride to here, and you don't know. Do they have a knife? Do they have a gun? Do they have a a syringe full of AIDS? Like you, you don't know. You don't know what they 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 have, but just just got in the car, and she was terrified. Yeah. As it turned out, she drove her where she needed to go, and she like got out and left, <laughs> which is like lucky, right? Yeah. But. So someone's automatic locking is not working, and then and and that happens. Who's liable? Yeah. Does Ford just basically go, well, you should have made your payments? And, you know, that, fair enough, right? There's no free lunch in, in this life. If you don't pay for something, you are effectively, you have stolen it. Um, and it is it is now Ford's property and not yours. But holy sh**. Like, it can't go down like this. And, like, uh, the ability for someone to just steal your car <laughs> by, by, by I mean we we talk about vulnerabilities in cars all the time we talked about vulnerabilities in Kias the other day where people could just steal them willy-nilly and it took an actual extreme amount of exposure to get them to do anything about it I think it was Kia and Hyundai I think it was both you think this is going to stay secure forever what about in 10 years when this car is still on the road yeah. What about in 15 years when the car is potentially still on the road? That's something I really worry about with Tesla. They have so many different revs oh. of their cars. Like, they don't have model years the way that traditional car companies have model years. What is going to happen when they don't feel like dealing with, the, with the software baggage of all those Model 3s with LiDAR? that like don't have as good of a camera system and like used supplementary lidar and uh what a pain um or anything i just uh yeah I, I i worry a lot about that and and it's it's a really good point like the 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 automotive industry in general and to their credit tesla has the probably the best reputation out of all of them but the automotive industry in general is terrible oh, yeah. when it comes to maintaining software so anything where i have to trust them to do anything post-purchase yeah i just I, I i just i write it off Other it doesn't exist to me potentially take your car back remotely yeah so that's not cool the technology to do this has yet to be developed apparently but it is at least theoretically possible given the current trajectory of self-driving cars. And a few days after this patent was filed by Ford, they announced the creation of a semi-autonomous driving subsidiary within the company. The idea is not entirely new. In some places, it is legal for dealerships to install remote systems that beep incessantly or even kill switch the car uh, from customers who are using credit in the event that they don't pay. Um, our discussion question is, what is the likely consequence of having these sorts of backdoors? I think we've kind of gone through it. Um, Luke and I are not in favor of this, I think is pretty yeah. fair to say. Yeah. This is, it's dystopian. It's dystopian. It and is. I'm not it's... using that word lightly. It is. This is it. Also a car related topic. Streamer <laughs> has van stolen. The internet gets it back. Uh, our source is Ludwig. <laughs> This guy. Yep. What great hair. You know? 
Fantastic. Like that's not fair to other people to have hair that good. Uh, anyway, two days ago, Ludwig announced that his prized 1997 Subaru Sambar microvan had been stolen from outside the warehouse where he films after a storm knocked out the power to the electric gate. Ludwig's assistant and a collaborator managed to track down the van that evening. Unable to acquire police assistance, they entered the van only to find someone in it. The man yeah. seemed confused and told them he didn't steal it, uh, but was given it by someone who owed him money. He then offered to return the van if they gave him $10,000. After they decided to call the police again... Which it's know, not even worth, by the way. Yeah, we'll, we'll try that route. Uh, the guy took off in the van. <laughs> At some point, he drove it to a massage parlor where it was spied by a Reddit user who had heard of the theft. The police finally showed up and the driver fled on foot, allowing the van to be recovered. Our discussion question here is that the uh, Reddit has been obsessed with my new car and maybe it's a positive thing. It's a good thing. Um... Yeah, they they gotta know everything. That you then guys you have a little army. That you guys know what uh, you guys know what car I drive, so that in the event that it gets stolen, you can help me recover it. <laughs> so I've been kind of easing into it, as some of you have noticed. No, it it, it was never a leak. Uh, every time there were glimpses of it or whatever, it was intentional. I just didn't want it to be like surprise. I finally bought a fancy car. Um, so I think it made its first appearance in the heating the garage with mining video. And then I alluded to what dealership it came from. And then I think it, I think I mentioned Porsche's infotainment system a little bit after that. And then it showed up in the parking lot in the labs tour. So I've kind of been, I've wanted it to Did be it a bit of a... have the wrap on it? On... Yeah. <laughs> I've wanted it to be a little bit slower just because I didn't want it to be like kind of a shock by the time people are like oh he bought a fancy car I wanted it to kind of be old news so mission sort of accomplished but my unintended consequence has been that it's created this intrigue like I've talked a lot about how one of the best things we ever did for our privacy was to just announce the location of our studio and put it on Google Maps because all of a sudden everyone immediately stopped caring yeah so I guess I kind of forgot that lesson and I've been sort of intentionally slowly you know priming that yes i bought a fancy car that hopefully doesn't immediately make me a complete douchebag but <laughs> yes i have a nice car now um so let's put it to rest once and for all uh it's a porsche Taycan. uh it's 2022 um it's higher spec than i probably would have gone for but the deal was but used right yeah it had uh just over a thousand miles on it that's a pretty sweet spot to buy used. Which is, it smelled new. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but because it was used, there was no provincial sales tax and no luxury tax, which is a tax that applies to vehicles over a certain value where we are. Which, by the way, the average sale cost of vehicles is creeping up to that luxury tax because all vehicles are just expensive now. They've gone down a lot. I oh, mean, Tesla they? slashed their prices big time. You see how many more Teslas there are in the parking lot? No. So <laughs> Uh, oh, I was going to say, no, you probably didn't notice because you don't work in office, but well, yeah, you come in for Rancho. Yeah, 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 like four people bought Teslas immediately after the price drops. You see that? I don't think all of them have even been delivered yet. Yeah. Our parking lot is just basically Tesla looks City. like a Tesla service center. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yes. Yes. But yeah, how, how they got the, how they got the, the truck? Minivan? Microvan? I don't know, whatever. How they got that back was, like, actually pretty cool. A little community effort. So, yeah, if it goes missing, I can count on you guys, right? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Ooh. We shot a video about this today. This is super cool. Uh, 4K upscaling for web video. NVIDIA just announced RTX Super Resolution is now supported for users of RTX 30 and 40 series GPUs. We were talking earlier in the show, sorry. We were talking earlier in the show about moats. Yeah. NVIDIA's additional technology that you get to leverage when you have their GPUs is a moat. Yes. Yeah, that's a perfect example. Um, so... Upscaling for videos played in Chrome and Edge with support for the RTX 20 series likely to come. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, anything from a 360p to 1440p plus video is supported and can upscale up to 4K. 
4K upscaling was previously only available on NVIDIA's Shield TV and not for high refresh rate video, and it didn't go as low as 360p. Uh, RTX VSR, that's what they're calling it, uses AI upscaling to sharpen low resolution video while removing compression artifacts. Uh, this is wild. I'm not going to spoil the whole video. It's definitely worth a watch. But I actually preferred the RTX upscaled 1080p to the native 4K on YouTube. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That's because okay. 4K on YouTube still has a lot of banding. It does. It's pretty low bit rate. Yes. So with a little bit of sharpening. Did you mess around with flow plane at all? And smoothing. No, I didn't think to try that. I'm interested. We should I play wonder. around with it. Because it, it's it's a little it's it's different than flow plane. It worked or, on, sorry, than YouTube. It worked video. on CBC Gem. Like it seems oh, to just I, work I on anything. I suspect it would work. Which is yeah. cool. I just wonder like it worked uh, how on the Netflix. Would be. So it worked on DRM protected content, which I wasn't sure if it would. Interesting. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's pretty cool. That is actually quite interesting. And um, Flowplane would be DRM protected as well. So yeah. Yeah. To a cert- well, okay. No, don't worry about it. Um so the, the missing information, though, rather than just like edge detection and sharpening, is predicted by a neural network that's trained on large data sets of images at different resolutions and replaced, which is how that works. Welcome to everything these days. It's pretty impressive. Um, there are some issues, and you guys are going to want to check out the video. But uh, um, Apparently someone in Floatplane Chat is using it to watch the stream on Floatplane Okay, right how now. is it? Yeah. Uh, I, maybe talk about that while I run and go pee. Sure. My bladder's yeah. going to explode. The show's too long! I, yeah, it's, we're already at three hours, I think. I think Dan left to, like, make coffee. Is that what I heard? Uh, no, that's the uh, drainage system for the air conditioner. Oh, <laughs> um, that makes I, sense. I have done um, a merch message every 22 seconds this stream. Wow. My fingers hurt. My eyes hurt. Uh, <laughs> so I just had to go look at something far away for a while. Yeah, we're at yeah we're at we're at a little bit over three hours. Okay, um, I haven't seen a response yet from Prometheus Awoken, who's the person who said they're using it to watch the stream right now. Um, is anyone else using it to watch the Floatplane stream right now? Um, maybe they will respond soon. Oh, there it is. Floatplane looks good already, but it's hard to believe this is live. Quality is insane. Does this mean we can talk about the Christmas album? I love that. Com- no, I I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, Sorry, maybe. I, just, uh, I, I, I love that comment uh, because float plane already looks good. It's great. But the fact that it looks even so much better is is fantastic. Um, yeah, what is the bit rate on float plane? It's, well, so when people talk about bit rate on YouTube as well, it's not it's not really a fixed thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll it'll vary, right? So we have like targets and stuff, but like it's it's variable bit rate. It's gonna it's gonna change quite a bit across the course of a video um and there's there's videos like just fully self-admitting there's there's videos that linus tech tips has uploaded um that have parts of them that don't really look that good because however the variable bit rate and compression all that kind of stuff decided to deal with it it just didn't really deal with it that well um and that's true for every video platform that does those types of things um and we just try to target a, a better amount than normal basically uh, the response was, uh, where'd it go? Oh, no. It, basically, it's it's better. They, they said full plane video is already really good, but watching it through the NVIDIA. Oh, there it is. FP looks good already, but it's hard to believe this is live. Quality is insane. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. That's super cool. Uh, our discussion question is, what does this mean for the future of digital video streaming? I mean, right now, spoiler, it consumes up to 300 watts of power. So nothing <laughs> in the short term, because realistically, so much of streaming video consumption is on devices like this that would light on fire if they were consuming 300 watts of power. Um, but in the very long term, I, I could I could see it fundamentally changing the way that we build video streaming infrastructure. Just kind of going like, yeah, um, instead of optimizing your stream for what looks the best to the eye at a given bit rate, you might start to optimize your stream for, you know, what might be most easily interpreted by an AI enhanced or machine learning enhanced player. 
So for example, like you might basically be able to like encode information into the video. Like this is a, this is you know, like put, just put like a, like a pattern. This is like a rock outcropping or whatever, you know, this is grass, uh, f you know, fill in the blanks which could lead to people having very different viewing experiences depending on which data set their machine learning enhanced player was trained on. Like, it, it could be, like, uh, you, okay, you know that tool that NVIDIA built where you just, like, essentially MS Paint and it turns into a landscape? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could see it being kind of like that to a point where you could just stream blocks of color and it would just it like decides things. Yeah, you, I, I you don't have think, metadata. I don't this, think this, will, ac this actor is angry. <laughs> I don't think Nvidia is going to build this that way, but I think this same technology could absolutely do that. Like, I, I bet you something that you could do is with a certain pattern, like almost QR code style, you could tell an interpretive whatever to repeat. Or, yeah. or, or to continue. Yeah. So you could have like a certain pattern and then some indicator amongst that pattern to take this pattern and either continue it, so change it as it goes, but keep the theme, yeah, so or to like, just repeat it. So it's like object-based compression almost. Yeah. Whoa. So instead of like, you could have like a, a, a wall, yeah. like this wall, which they can't really see, but you could have like a more complicated yeah. design on a wall. Yeah. But then instead of filling all your bit rate it's, with that complicated it's design. It's almost like mocap. Like motion, so you could almost have like like uh, like encoded like dots, like like object markers, yeah. And then you essentially Tell instead of whatever streaming data, you are actually just uh, rendering it in in subsequent frames. It wouldn't work very well for really fast paced video, but for something like WAN show, you could probably get the bit rate essentially down to. Like extremely like negligible low. and i wonder if there's wow. ways that you could communicate to it like confetti cannon because one of the biggest things that compression algorithms have a lot of problem with is lots of small things that are moving and shifting so confetti has always been this like mm -hmm. uh, people noticed it originally from uh when when we moved to digital video for tvs mm -hmm. and the nfl was playing yeah, they right. would shoot Super confetti Bowl. cannons at the end of the game, and the whole thing would just turn into like fuzzy snow. You yeah. can't see anything, and people were very confused about it. It's the same problem we have today. Literally the exact same thing. You have digital video. You compress it. You put too many things moving in different ways, and it's just bleh, your quality is just going to tank immediately. So if you could just tell the GPU to do that, and just tell it to generate it instead of needing to like deal with all these changes. Very cool. Be really interesting. Uh, YouTube announces some vague new AI tools, something, something, um, create artificial scenes, swap clothing virtually. Sounds like kind of VTuber, VTuber stuff. Uh, they're also apparently rolling out a feature where creators can record a short parallel to another video, similar to TikTok's duet feature. It also happens to be similar to YouTube's own long defunct yeah. video responses feature, which was discontinued September 2013 because it had a click through rate of 0.0004%. At the scale YouTube's at now, 0.0004% could actually lot. be worth having. Um, I think that's pretty much it for topics today. We've got a thing where artists and computer scientists are designing anti-facial recognition clothes. It's pretty cool, but I think we can leave it for a week where we aren't already three hours in with um, a lot of merch messages to get through. Do we want to deal with these extra topics or no? The ones at the bottom? Yes. Um, no, no, I don't think we need to. no, and no, we're not going to talk about you organizing in your wrecked thumb. I'm yeah. sorry to hear about your thumb though. It's okay. Merch message is time. Let's go. When show after hours. All right, here we go. We've got quite a few tonight. There's been a lot of merch messages. First one up here is from Jeremy. How reliable was your Thunderbolt to closet PC setup? Thunderbolt always seems to be finicky for us in the workplace. When it works, it's great. But you probably noticed that I have other boxes on my desk. Um, they're from a company called Icron, and they do optical USB. Those things are bulletproof. Uh, when my Thunderbolt, I always have my peripherals connected to that, so that in the event that I need to troubleshoot my stupid Thunderbolt dock, I have a working keyboard and mouse. Uh, I also have an optical display port directly from my computer to my monitor now through the walls. Uh, rather than relying on Thunderbolt to carry DP for that same reason. When it works, it's amazing, and just one cable, blah, 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 blah. But when it doesn't work, boy, is it ever a pain in the butt. 
Okay, next one here is from Justin. Hey guys, I enjoy listening to the WAN show on my Friday nights while catching up on the week's email. As your jobs get more administrative and less technical, how do you keep up with your tech skills? I still end up doing a lot of tech stuff. Um, like I still get called in to help with stuff sometimes. You know, I, I know just enough about everything, which is sort of unique in the office here. Like there's obviously a lot of things that, you know, an Anthony or an Alex um, know more than me about. But there's still things that I know more about than them. Like I'm, I'm a generalist, right? So I still end up doing a lot. I also am surrounded by people who know more, like no matter what it is. Okay, so no matter who you are, there's something I know more than you about. But no matter what it is, there's someone in this building that knows way more about it than me. So I pick up a lot by osmosis. Yeah. Um, just being around, um, you know, hearing hearing what the trials and tribulations were and seeing the solution. Like I'm immersed in this stuff all day, every day. So even though a lot of it's administrative, a lot of the admin stuff that I do, like, like paperwork-y stuff, is things like script review. So yeah, on the one hand, I did a lot of admin this week, but I also got into the weeds of how applications worked on Apple's uh, XServe line of servers. Uh, we've got a video coming about those, by the way. We got our hands on the last model that they ever built, like played around with it. You know why it died? Spoiler alert, it's too good. It's too good. Do you just like never have to swap them out or something? Well, so that's part of it. Um, but that's not the biggest part of it because the way that Apple manages hardware obsolescence is through not providing software updates anymore. Right. So realistically, yeah. they could have just, you know, <clears throat> shortened the, 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 the software support cycle on it or something like that. But what they were up against was completely different revenue models. Their model, right, is to sell hardware, for better or for worse, or at least, you know, in 2009. Yeah. Well, how do they compete then with, you know, Microsoft and their partners like Dell or HP Enterprise, where they charge you for the hardware and then you pay for the software and then you play, pay for client access licenses. Yeah, service. And at that time, they were trying to figure out how to turn everything service based. And Apple's sitting here going, well, we're going to have a riot on our hands if we try to convert like this. Why are we even bothering when everything's going to go to the cloud anyway? So... They're sitting there going, okay, how do we turn this into a recurring revenue model? We can either, you know, duke it out in like this stupid specialized hardware space, or we can just turn everything into software as a, uh, in, sorry, everything into like a service-based cloud-based solution. Obviously, we know which way they went, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so good. It does so much. And you just like get new software that just comes out for it and there were some, you know, dumb locked into the Apple ecosystem things. You had to buy their hard drive, for example. Oh, yeah, gross. Yeah, stuff like that. But once it was up and running, I can see why people loved them. And people did. Like, I couldn't figure, I couldn't figure out before we really dug into it why anyone cared that XServe went away. Now I get it. It, it acted as a, you could use it for, like, Windows domain services. Oh, yeah, right? I wouldn't have expected that. SMB file, star, file, store, uh, file sharing? Like, it, it did everything. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, next one's up from Zach. Uh, hey, Linus and Luke. I bought a house a year and a half ago. Congratulations. And, nice. And oh. it's been a money pit. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Would that you like to retract sense. your statement? Uh, last week, my roof leaked and badly <sighs> damaged my ceiling and floor. Do you have any homeowner horror stories? Well, um, <laughs> my garage has a roof leak in it. The roofers have been back to fix it once. It leaked again in the snow, this most recent snow. Oh. So it's all, it's all wet again. Um, so that's cool. Um, I know Luke has had some horror stories. My bathroom has leaked three times because I was being gaslit by everyone that came to repair it. And they kept telling me that it was something that it wasn't. And then I finally got my like dad in who can't do it himself because he's not a licensed plumber anymore. Yeah. But is a plumbing instructor and knows his. <laughs> so he came in and actually figured out what was actually happening. Yeah. And then he got one of his students who is a ex-student who is a licensed plumber now to come in and fix it. And now it hasn't been a problem anymore. 
but that leaked multiple times. The roof is leaked uh, twice. Uh, the the whole building had this like Christmas tree style leak because there was a leak on the top floor that leaked out and down throughout the entire building twice because it happened and then the company that was trying to restore the building from it happening caused another one to happen on the floor right below that one sick so it happened again and then it took them like a year to fix that and then a bunch of other things got wrecked and just it's been just a living nightmare basically uh yeah. do you remember the engineered hardwood that we put in as part of the um cleanest living room upgrade like when we went from the dark brown to the gray. Yeah. So we chose that from a, a local flooring store and the supplier for it was in California. And basically what happened was they installed it here. Um, our humidity apparently either is too high or fluctuates too much. And the whole thing contracted and ripped it apart. There's oh. gaps in that floor this big. Ooh. Yeah, between between the boards, the um, the installer tried to blame the store. The store tried to blame the manufacturer. They like sent in like a third party expert basically to try to gaslight us into that our house was. First, they told us it wasn't humid enough. Then they told us it was too humid. Fortunately, we had a nest that monitored our humidity constantly. We we're like, um, actually, no, that ain't it. This is a defective product. You guys didn't allow it to whatever enough or you didn't secure it well enough or you didn't you buffered you you buffered too little or too much. You did something. Yeah. Uh, or the product just what anyway, they ultimately never fully fixed it. Um, and unless we want to sue them, there's nothing that we can do about it. Um, I mean, there's my pool that isn't done yet. That's pretty cool. Um, there was also when I installed the uh, the DIY air conditioning. Well, first it leaked uh, because I made a mistake and then that was fixed pretty quickly, but you know, caused a little bit of damage. Then we got, uh, you know, by the laundry room, the old, ceiling, old there, yeah, the old yeah, place, yeah. the ceiling there was like bad and like the floor was wet. Oh, this was the new floor. Brand new floor was wet and was like rippling. Um, so that was separate from the issue with the floor, which they tried to blame that. They tried to blame the the separation on that, but we were like, no, no, there are completely separate rooms that yeah. are also separating. That ain't it. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it was like rippling, and we didn't realize until it had like come up in between the things because the leak was really slow. Um, as it turns out, the problem was not that the AC unit was leaking because you know how they, they it collects condensation, right? And it has to drain it somehow. Well, that was all fine. That's what I thought was the problem. But I kept, I checked those units over and over and over and over again. They weren't leaking. But the volume of water coming through was obviously substantial. Do you know what it was? It was the main bathroom shower. Oh. Do you know why we never noticed? Because only Yvonne showers. I bath. So it was a oh. micro fracture in like uh, in, a, in, an el in an elbow, like a PVC elbow. And as long as it was one shower once in a while, it didn't leak enough to cause any kind of problem. Like a few drops or whatever, it will eventually make its way yeah. away and yeah. it'll dry or whatever, even inside a wall. Yeah. But now that the AC was running continuously, it revealed a <sighs> flaw that had actually probably been there for years. Yeah. Um, okay, so there. Is that enough horror stories from you? <laughs> Home ownership do be like that, though. It kind of sucks. Don't be down on baths. What the f is baths? wrong with having a bath? I take, I take, I take, I take a different t type of bath, but I take baths. Yeah, I mean, your bath is more manly than my bath. I got the scented candles up nice. in there. I got the chocolates on the side. I yeah, I, I take a bath. Look. Man, when I, especially when I exercise, I need a bath. You, like, you, the heat, man, it's, it's good, it's good for the good. muscles. Yeah, baths are good. It's good for the muscles. Okay, this next one's from... Everyone's saying dual shower is a lie. Uh, Neo Chowen says, I thought you said that uh, you and Yvonne shower together to talk over stuff. Yeah, we used to shower together a lot more. That was back in the day. And we still we still do when I don't when I like didn't exercise, but I man like at least every other day, 
Um, like I, okay, I, you know, I'm going to out myself here. I'm not like an everyday shower or bather. There's um, also, in my opinion, there are certain levels of gross that you can be after doing like certain amounts of whatever activity that I will, I will just go through the full shower cycle just like twice if I'm having a shower. <laughs> Cause I'm like, this is just, <laughs> this need this needs more than one pass. And if you take a bath, you can kind of just deal with it. Which is nice. I don't know. I'm not down on baths. But yeah, so uh, we do use the shower occasionally, but we were we were not using it a lot in the lead up to the AC thing. And honestly, I haven't used it much at the uh, at the new place. I would bath significantly more if I fit. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't even like remotely fit in in my bathtub. So. I, I only use it for, for cold stuff. I'm not a once a week bather either though. Anytime I exercise, I'll bathe and that's usually every other day. God, yeah. So like, yeah. I, I have very few opportunities to take a shower. Like if I need to like quickly clean up, yeah, obviously I'll jump in the shower. Okay, got another one here from Jamie. Uh, Linus, if you were stuck on an island, what's the one thing in your LTT backpack that will ensure your survival? An LTT screwdriver. I mean, there's no one thing that's going to ensure your survival. You're boned. In what situation? Maybe, maybe a tent. In what? You're stranded on an island. Oh. Yeah. How, how about how about a sleeping? How about a shelter? There. It could fit a decent your size shelter. Your backpack can fit a lot of stuff. Yeah, but he said I only get one thing. In the you only get one thing in the backpack. Yeah. That's it. Oh. <laughs> wow, yeah. Okay, got another one here from Tong. Uh, got my first tech job paycheck today, and the first thing nice. I bought was LTT merch. Let's Are you go. proud of me? Not necessarily. <laughs> As a big fan of open source software, <laughs> does Floatplane contribute to open source software projects or plan to open source anything? Some uh, of them, and yes, and also no. I, I Hold on, I want to address the am I proud of you thing yet. I, I am an advocate for um for 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 fiscal responsibility so if you had a good job before that and you know it, it it's just a career change or or whatever else and you like have plenty of money then by all means yeah i'm super proud of you for getting your first tech job paycheck but you should only spend money on stuff if if you can afford it you shouldn't just like take a check and just like immediately converted into stuff That's, so if it was financially no problem yeah then, then love then, it yeah, Woo. yeah. Uh, but if it was a stretch for you then i would i would like to see you take care of things like uh shelter and food and um and you know your, your basics your basics first yeah we don't sell anything essential I think is is pretty fair to say. I mean, I think clothing is pretty essential, and I think you, we can justify the cost of the clothing just with how well it lasts. But yeah. Um, oh, sorry. That's Luke's reminder to tell me that the show's been going on for far too long, and we need to wrap it up. But it's not happening anytime soon. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I removed my bedtime alarms for a uh, nice WAN show. Next up's from Matthew. Uh, Luke, I love how you have shaped LTT and that you hired Linus. Uh, just spent 1.5 hours on hold to set up an account for garbage. Uh, what is the worst on hold call you've ever had or worst oh. service call? Oh. oh, Luke's got some stories. All right. I'm trying to even think. I don't even remember who it was. I know there's been some like data center stuff that's been brutal. Yeah. I, I know that I have spent literally a day. Like, not a working day. Like, literally a whole day from the morning till night on hold. <laughs> but I'm trying to remember who it was. And I don't remember. Uh, Lin Linus, I, I used to be very against calling people. I hated calling people. And Linus got me on the just call people thing. Yeah, he'd there be was... like, they didn't reply to my email. So there is simply no way for me to find an answer to this question. <laughs> like, there's a phone number <laughs> on their website or like a phone number in their email signature. And now I'm pick up a f***ing phone. Now I'm like almost too far the other way where yeah. I like I hate emailing if I have the possibility of just calling people. Yeah. I'm like, I can just get this done faster. I could I could get an answer immediately or I could just wait around and see if my message got lost in the ether. Oh, obviously. Boop, yeah. boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Let's go. There's also a, a big problem. Yeah. With 
read receipts and like modern messaging stuff yeah, for sure where it's for i sure. really can't trust if someone actually read it or not even if it says that they read it if it's an automatic thing and they didn't react to it i don't trust that they actually read it yeah because it might have just been opened on their phone and they didn't mean to uh, there was something very very recently that i am 100 percent not going to go into details of but i told you about where i was just like harassing people on the phone until i got far enough into the chain and then i finally got what i needed it worked it works. It was not going to work any other way. Nope. Um, spent a lot of time on the phone there. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't have a specific one, uh, but I have. I know that I have looked at my phone that was plugged in because it would like ran out of battery because it was on the phone for so long on a hold timer or a, I don't know if it was on hold, but it's like the next whatever is yeah. waiting for you. That was over eight hours long. Wow. I have seen that before. And then... When they finally went to go, like, pick it up, something happened and it disconnected. And I had to call them and wait through the entire queue again. It didn't resume. That's wild. Companies that have call-in lines like that really have to do the callback thing. Yeah. You're in queue. Do you want us to call you back when yep. you're up? Yes. You press the button. It hangs up. They call you when you're And right. failing that, they need to not have any human voice in the hold music yes that yes. pisses me off yeah like did you know that our whatever whatever hours of operation are this and this to this oh is that a still the... because at least if i can just put it next to me and completely space out that's all right fine not great but it's acceptable yeah yeah thank god you don't have minutes yeah 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 it's not, it's not my plan anyways. Get on, Linus. Yeah, the chat's <laughs> loving this. Hey, how's it going? We're still on hold. Yeah. See like, you later. Hope you're having a great so day. so incredibly annoying. Never, Especially once, ever. once you're more than like five minutes deep. If, if you're two hours into waiting, like, I don't want to pay attention to this. Yes. Play the stupid hold music constantly so yes. that I know the line hasn't dropped or whatever yes. else. I'll put it on whatever volume I need to not really care that much. And the second that stops for whatever reason i want to pick it up and have someone be there yeah All next right. up this one's from a different matthew long time fan here i don't think i've seen either of you talk about lobe or ai ghosts before on when do you have any thoughts on this phenomenon uh, i would be careful googling this i did that earlier and it's good to, to, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't personally find it that interesting um i'd never heard of this before it's very spooky I don't know. It kind of has like a Slender Man kind of vibe. I, that's of what I feel like too. It's kind of a... I don't know. It's just... <laughs> nah. Yeah. All right. I, I don't personally find it that interesting. Moving on. Next one's from Corey. Hi, guys. In the labs, your video, your video, you commented how it was supposed, how it wasn't making any revenue yet. In the labs video, you commented how it wasn't making any revenue yet. Yes. <laughs> how will it or the new site make revenue by supporting videos? Or will the new site have some form of subscription? Yes. Um, affiliate revenue, subscriptions maybe, um, helping us produce better content on the video channels, helping us launch more video channels. I think Some of it's going to be a little bit intangible. Yeah, I, I'd love to see... Yeah, I'd love to see... Um, retailers uh, license API access to our data, for example, to make their product pages more informative. I don't know. In the long term, there's all kinds of ideas, but only time will tell. I know that it's going to be a competitive advantage to have this testing capacity. That I know. What we're competing for, what we're going to win, uh, who we're competing against, not sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next one's from Melissa. One of my coworkers has an LTT water bottle and accidentally cooked it in our industrial oven. Did you know that it can withstand over 300 degrees for four hours with no damage at all? Even the lid was intact. I glass, would not recommend that. The glass beading might also. Yeah, the glass bead in the bottom. Um, yeah, 300, that might not be enough to melt glass. I don't know. I don't know. That's it doesn't say Fahrenheit or Celsius. Not I would my area of expertise. Celsius. Okay. Well. Cool. Neat. Don't do that intentionally. Yeah, please. 
Uh, next one's from Carlos. Love the backpack. Take it to work every day. And the tech pouch will be a great addition. Woo! I can't wait for LTX if you can talk about it. Linus, what creators have you spoken to about coming to LTX? I haven't gotten an approved list yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, some of them are, are, you know, even once we say they're coming, stuff happens. Things come up last minute, whether it's like... They're a, creators. Their schedules are crazy. Yeah, family responsibility or, a, or a, 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 an impossible to say no to sponsor deal. You know, whatever. You never know. Stuff happens. You know, yeah. life, life, is, life is crazy. Um, but what I've asked the team to do is check in with people and say, hey, can I at least say that you want to try to come? And if you do, aren't able to make it, no hard feelings or whatever, but we want to at least be able to start to talk about people. Um, and I'm not there yet soon apparently brett from ufd tech announced today that he's going to ltx okay i mean i didn't know but there you go <laughs> well someone in chat said it i don't know yeah, if no one no one told me he was confirmed <laughs> so i guess i guess creators might start talking about it on their own <laughs> <clears throat> okay next up is his mom is definitely coming my dad is let's go <clears throat> Uh, next up is from Riley. Hey, Linus, do you have any plans for your company in terms of handing it down to your kids in the future? If so, can you share any ideas? I wouldn't want it to just turn into nepotism central here. I don't think that's healthy for the, for the work environment. Um, how would you go about employing one of them? Man. See, that's, that's tough because I could imagine myself saying... You know, Junior, you're going to start at the bottom and darn it, you're going to stay there until you, you know, prove yourself. But I could also see myself kind of, you know, every parent wants to create an advantage for their children. They want them to succeed, right? So, you know, if, if my son or daughter came to me and was like, uh, you know, Dad, I've got this great idea for a channel, um, I you would want to give them a shot. I, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'd want to give them a shot at it. You know, like I. But then there's there's a risk there, right? Like, where's the line between giving them a shot and, you know, essentially uh, hiring people to to babysit them? I always liked um, keep them out of my hair. You know, I've told these stories before, but my dad was very often one of the coaches on a variety of sports teams that I played on. And the initial reaction of all the kids on the team, if they haven't played with you before, is like, oh, this is going to be stupid because you're just going to get all the advantageous positions and you're going to get more yeah. play time than everyone and all this kind of stuff. And within a couple weeks, usually, <laughs> they had totally flipped and they were like, oh, man, I'm like so sorry because my dad would be way harder on me than anybody else, which was absolutely the way to go we agreed on it like there was i mean we agreed. it's not like he was going to do it in any other way to be completely clear but like i agreed with him on it and all this kind of stuff because i hated it when all the kids would be like oh like your dad's a coach so you're gonna get everything handed to you i would rather earn it and then them respect me yeah so 100%. like i liked that the other one was um one time my brother refed a hockey game that i was in and the other team thought it was going to be bs and then I like hit somebody and my brother ran up to me and grabbed the back of my jersey and tossed me across the, the hog. This is when he was like max jacked. He literally threw me and I went like flying through the air. Uh, and then everyone was like, all right, never mind. <laughs> I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You, I think you almost have to be like more watchful, more harsh. But then at the same time, it's not like the point isn't to just like beat them into submission yes, either. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Right? Like you want to you want to create an environment where they can do their best. Give them the opportunity but don't just like make them auto win. I think yeah. is the way to go. Cuz they're like there's this whole thing where um where wealth survives a maximum of I think like it's like three. 3 or 4 generations or something like that because what the 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 the, the characteristics that create wealth are not perpetuated by being wealthy uh, so it's like cyclical yeah um and so we got to figure out you know how to how to make our kids have the same characteristics that have made me and yvonne successful and it sure wasn't growing up with silver spoons in our mouths yeah <laughs> yeah 
like our kids have it way easier than we did by a long shot. We see it and we like don't know how to fix it because obviously, you know, we would like to enjoy our success a little. You know, I, I don't I don't want to have a newspaper route after my full time job during the day and have my kids fall asleep in the back of the car while I deliver papers or whatever um, just so that they see that. Like, because I just don't want to. It's tough. This has been a thing that's been very interesting to observe from the outside is like how you deal with that. Because I know all those concepts have always been very important to you. Yeah. But then it's like, what's the limit on not enjoying your own success? And like, what do you do? Just lie to your kids? I don't know. We could just not leave the money. We've talked about it. Yeah. Is there realistically a benefit in that? I don't know. Are their lives actually better? Maybe. I'm not saying, like, I'm not actually fighting the other side. I'm just... I don't know. Okay. And and it's not even necessarily the kids that are the problem. It could be the grandkids. Like, maybe our... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Your inheritance is backpacks and screwdrivers. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You want another? Yeah. All right. This is an anonymous one. Hello and good weekend, Luke and Linus. Is there being any progress on getting the official Honeywell PTM7950 thermal pad to LTT store? You don't A have little to, bit. You don't have to read the exact words. You can like... <laughs> Honeywell are all rights reserved. <laughs> um, yes, but we're not sure what it's going to look like yet. Uh, I don't think we had any luck getting in touch with Honeywell directly, but I think we're in touch with a supplier. So yeah, we we'd love we'd love to carry it. I think we're I think we were also chatting with the rack studs folks about carrying rack studs. Just like I don't know, can, can the store just like carry, carry cool good, stuff. good products? I, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I don't see why not. This one's from uh, Sonair. Uh, oh yeah, have... we'll get the dimensions for the tech pouch at some point. Oh, I yelled at Nick, and now they're on the website. Oh, they are. Yeah. Hey. Sorry, I sent him a respectful professional message. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> uh, That's Dan for you. Size guide. Got him. Nice. Uh, there we go. Boop. Enjoy. Okay. Uh, I'm interested in the new tech pouch, but I don't see dimensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already did that one. They're there now. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Joseph, uh, Linus, have you upgraded the firmware on your Z-Wave stick? The 700 series has a bug, which creates crazy amounts of traffic, making the network unusable. No. Oh. Any more home automation videos coming? I wonder if that's part of my problem. Uh, I haven't specifically done that. I will have to look into that. Um, more home automation videos coming? Yeah, in, undoubtedly at some point, but not for a while. I'm waiting on Innovelli to release their new... Um, millimeter wave presence detection switches hopefully that'll solve a lot of my problems so this is a float plane message actually but i want to address it someone mentioned uh after the goat video have you gained any traction with linus opening a land center so one of the problems there is that that wouldn't solve this particular problem because so many and we've talked about this too so many modern games don't support local play at all a lot a lot of games are multiplayer only there's not very much like local skirmish there's not very much co-op there's not as even as much single player i find there's a lot of multiplayer only games coming out and like tarkov for instance you can do something that is uh super privateery and you can there's like a single player version of it that you can acquire but it's like very not above board mm -hmm. and that version doesn't support co-op and it's like definitely illegal so it's uh, i don't know it doesn't really solve the problem with all of that said um i am planning to open up a badminton center so this is that's something i think i haven't really talked about yet um and it will be designed in such a way that it will be powered up and networked up, and the goal is to make WAN, uh, WAN whale, whale LAN, LAN. Um, a regular occurrence. So we've I, talked about this vaguely. Yeah, I think we've. I think I've never really just come out and said it. Um, progress is excellent on Beautiful. on the building, and um, first. it is it is 
loaded for bear in terms of networking and power. <laughs> Sweet. I think we'll be able to do 250, 300 person lands there pretty easily. And the requirements that I laid out for Chase and anyone working on events is I want this thing pretty much um, preloaded onto pallets. Or, you know, like pretty much to the point where in three hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can roll it out. So like. Set up and take down really fast. I'm talking network switches for the tables that at the end of the event, you just unplug them from the computers, wrap them up, stack them. So when it's time to redeploy them, you just go plonk, plonk from the wall. Have, do you think you could have certain folding tables where it's like built into the table so you don't even have to, you just unplug it and fold the table and put it away? I mean, maybe. Yeah. I don't see why we couldn't, we couldn't wire it up like that. I mean, basically I said, look, I, I don't want it to interfere with our ability to run this place as a badminton center, but if we book off times occasionally, I would like this to be a quarter or something. unroll, roll back up. About three hours, I think, is the goal that I set for them with uh, with a handful of people. And I think it's doable because the entire building is going to have all of the connection points for land and power to the point where if you've got just like a, a, a couple of bins of these California standard like power breakout boxes and you, 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 you kind of roll them over and you just go thunk, thunk, thunk. Well, there's your power. You've got just like, uh, you know, like a big cart of tables. You just kind of roll down the middle and go, okay, table, 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 table. If, ever, if you know what the layout is and you've kind of done it a few times, I think we could get this down to the point where we could, on a Friday night, say, okay, uh, thanks for watching. See you again next time. Same bad time, same bad channel. Uh, for those of you who are going to be at Whale Land, we'll see you guys see in you there. half an hour. That'd be sick. And we just... Dude, the after party comes back in a real big way, yeah. basically. Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> That's another random thing I found. I, the the overlay for the after for the party, after party the, the gaming bars. overlay yeah yeah um, apparently Jake updated your Z Wave stick by the way oh thanks Jake yeah um, legendary dust on float plane says Honeywell is hard to get a hold of they won't return my emails and I'm trying to buy aircraft parts for the U S Air Force <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay then have, have they tried calling them <sighs> uh, I, yeah I don't know it's a good question <laughs> so, I mean, yeah very topical all right hit me something. Uh, this one's from Brian, longtime viewer, LTT store whale. Thanks for adding yeah. another item I have purchased now. Uh, <laughs> when will we see the RGB PC case pin back in stock? I don't know. Limited thing? I think that was part of the limited run the last time. Um, the reason that we did it as a limited run was that we didn't get that one sampled and we were worried it would suck. So we ordered very limited quantities of it. It wasn't an intentional limited edition thing. So with that in mind, I don't see why we wouldn't restock it, but I don't have any kind of ETA on that. You'd have to, I don't know, Nick would know. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. his department. <laughs> okay, next up is from Lewis. Hi, Luke. On a previous WAN show, you mentioned you would make an, make inverted chicken cordon bleu to impress people. What Did kind you... of people, Luke? <laughs> Isn't that just like... Ham and cheese on top of how many X chromosomes of, did they have of a chicken breast? <laughs> Two. Um, so <laughs> in the yeah, I would. How I would successful was it, Luke? Actually, extremely. <laughs> how do you define success, literally. Luke? <laughs> I'm not going into that, but I will say it was 100% successful, uh, and and it had a decent sample size. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was chicken breast in a frying pan, a um, little bit of little bit of olive oil. You would put, oh man, it's been so long. Okay, basil on top of the chicken breast, with uh, prosciutto ham on top of that, and then provolone cheese on top of that. And you would try you. The difficulty was keeping it all together. So part of the reason why this was successful is because it was visually interesting. Uh, so you could keep them entertained. Um, so you would need to let the basil sit there for a second so it kind of cook in. And then when you put the ham on, you wanted to kind of press it around the perimeter of the chicken so it would kind of sear into the chicken slightly so that it would hold together. And then you need to use two spatulas to flip it over once you put the cheese on so you could cook the cheese on the top as well. And then it was basically 
chicken cordon bleu, it's just not inside, it's on top. So mm -hmm. call it inverted. Mm -hmm. It was great. And very successful, you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know. <laughs> you do know. <laughs> oh, God. Everyone I... knows. Your mom knows. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this wasn't a secret. Everyone's young at a certain point in time, and they're 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 on the market. Nope, I, I am, was never young. I am now happily off the market. This is not a problem. I was never young. Yeah, I've always been old and boring. I gotta talk to my mom. <laughs> oh no. Um, all right, this next one's from Greg. Uh, hey Linus, my company works with the fireworks. Uh, they're Ooh. happening again this year, the same weekend as LTX. Mm. Thought you'd want to consider giving people a heads up Saturday downtown will suck. Plan ahead. Oh yeah, good point. Oh. I would hope by the time Dude. we're rolling around to fireworks time, everyone who's going to be at the BYOC would already be there. The whale land could like step out and watch the fireworks for a second. And yeah, then that'd go be back sick. Inside. That'd I don't be think wicked. it'd be for a second though, because if you need to be on like Spanish banks or whatever to see them, I don't think it's gonna oh, be that close. Okay, I don't know where they were. Yeah. All right, this next one's from AJ. LMG holds a lot of valuable parts, and you often joke about taking stuff from the office during extreme upgrades. Has anything really valuable gone missing, or has anyone anonymously been caught doing that? Uh, the Pippin X Mark console disappeared. Yes. I don't know what happened to it. I. Genuinely do not have yeah. it. Um, also, and it actually sucks because that thing was really cool. I lent Luke this DVD. <laughs> that was not a part of work. That seven, is not inventory. Set. Eight years, eight years ago, <laughs> and I said, "Hey, um, this is not only you know my favorite show, but also um, you know it's kind of rare and it has some sentimental value for me as well. And uh, could I please get it back once you're done watching it? And not only um, did I not get it back when he was done watching it." I had to follow it up <laughs> earlier this week, and he was like, no, I don't have it. But then he was like, oh, maybe I do have it. And I, then said he I, checked, would, I said I would look for and it. And then he found it, and now I finally got it back, and I consider that to be a long enough time period that it's completely unacceptable. He stole it, essentially. <laughs> he stole it and waited for me to forget. Oh, Pippin Atmark. Sorry, did I say Xmark? Sorry, Pippin oh, Atmark yeah. was Atmark the console. Is correct. Uh, yeah. That that is a true story. I did just get this back from him right before the show today. I don't think necessarily. <laughs> and I did lend it to him eight years ago. Are perfect though. <laughs> the but, main ones. Yeah, yeah. The main ones. Yeah. By the yeah. way, this is a great show. It's streaming on CBC Gem. Um, it's very funny. Okay, I guess I gotta. Where I worked, parts were locked in an inventory cage or closets, hint, hint, at Luke. Yeah, it would be a little unreasonable, I think, to do that here. Yeah, I don't think it's realistic. Because the, the building is that inventory cage. And we have good people here. Yeah. Like, we've actually had shockingly little go missing over the years. I wouldn't even be surprised if we found that stupid at mark lying around somewhere at some point. I, I I'm just not too worried about it. Where it would even be. Kind of sucks because they're not like it could have been thrown away. The server that we used for ten gamers one CPU got accidentally thrown away, which I was extremely angry about. It wasn't stolen. It was just it was it was chucked into the like the outside um, uh, that trailer that we used for like hauling junk to the dump, and I found it in there completely like destroyed. Oh my god! And I was like, what the actual f happened here? Because it was worth thousands of dollars, right? Yeah. And some miscommunication had taken place, and it got thrown away. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> that hurts. <laughs> okay. This next one's from another anonymous. Uh, where did the WAN show intro animation come from? Ed made it. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's made all of them, as far as I know. And uh, the last of the curated I have is from Brian. Hey, Linus and Luke, have you ever considered open sourcing any of the software projects for oh. Floatplane and Labs? We just talked about this. Um, TBD. Yeah. Yeah, TBD. Okay, we've got a few potentials. I'll have a look at these. Yeah, go through it. Um, what's y'all's favorite non-Canadian food, asks Eduardo. Favorite non-Canadian? I mean, oh, man. Pretty much all of my favorite foods are not like what, what the hell's Canadian all food? All we really have is like poutine. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> and like half the time you get poutine here, it's not made right. Like it, yeah, it's it's, it's too well, the gravy's too cold to melt the cheese, and you're sitting here going, "This is basic." It's got, I don't know, man, like curry, like any kind of like Malaysian oh, yeah. curry or like like yeah, Southeast Asian curry, stuff. Indian curry. I love curry. 
I like I, burritos. Give me a burrito any day. I love nachos. Man, authentic Mexican. Every time I go down to L.A., like the first so thing good. I do is find some hole in the wall Mexican yeah. restaurant now because yeah. it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, we have we have some Mexican places up here. Most of them are like fast food style, like Chipotle yeah. style. No, which is not really going to be it. Yeah, and no. the like one or two sit downs that we have really they suck. They are no offense, not on the same level yeah. at all. Yeah, you could go to any like just <clears throat> random mexican place in like la it's like it's the same as uh it's the yeah. same as how you can get you know indian food in vancouver and it's like overpriced and it's fusion and blah 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 uh or you can get indian food in surrey where there's a huge then like east indian solid. community yeah and it's like it's cheap and plentiful and delicious yeah you're just like yeah because that's where the people who eat this all the time and actually know what it's supposed to taste like are yeah so yeah yeah it really it really depends Oh, right. I'm, suppo- I'm, I'm doing this now. Now it's your job. Uh, okay. So now I just, if I hit re- reject, does it go back? Okay. If someone can clear them from the reject I'll pile after I press that, then that would be cool. Um, Luke, what would you say gives you the most fulfillment in your professional life? Asks Luke. Oh, wait. It's not. Oh, it's for both of us from Luke. Uh, I thought it was to Luke. Sure. Well, <laughs> cool. Uh, so it's not that easy, is it? I've had a really fun time. Um, as my team has expanded and the things that we work on have expanded, I've really liked, I don't know. I like making things that people use. Yeah. And like, no, I'm not directly making it, but I like working with a team who makes things that people use. So like, I like that internal people use the inventory system. Yeah. I like that Linus Media Group is the, you know, the largest member of Floatplane and we use the platform. I like that people are going to be using the labs website. I like that people use blah, 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 blah. And I like that the path that we're going on is more of that. Yeah. I've, I've always liked that. One of the reasons why when I first got into software engineering, I wanted to work with, uh, I wanted to make like controller boards and stuff like that was because like people are literally going to literally use this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's cool. Uh, so I've, I've always liked that. I think that's probably mine. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that combined with, Seeing people follow, um, not follow because they they take completely different paths from me, but seeing people be inspired by what we do and get into computer engineering, software yeah. engineering, um, electronics engineering, uh, like seeing what we're doing, just like sharing this love of it, create a new generation of people who are going to pursue these career paths and create the the next the next wave of cool technology for us to geek out over is. I, I I love that it's kind of a perpetual motion machine. What what we're making, um, definitely yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Michael says, been waiting on these shirts. Also, I really enjoy watching some of the more thematic artistic builds, like the Nerdforge PC. Do you have a favorite? Well, the Nerdforge PC, obviously, that thing is so cool. Actually, we've done some other really cool stuff. The copper tubing build was really amazing. I loved Alex's sleeper builds. Like that Xbox one was super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Favorite builds. I mean, the the original desk PC was a classic, but I don't know that it's a favorite. Anonymous says, Friday when shows a ritual at this point. Fun fact, LTTstore.com merch is all over the place at Zooks, a self-driving car company. Uh, Not to have go AI tangent, Luke, what are your thoughts on robo-taxis? Oh, yeah, I saw this. Uh, I think they're absolutely the future of taxis, like no doubt. Uh, I also don't think we're necessarily 100% there yet. Um, but I totally think that's the way that's going to go. Thought that for a long time too. Yeah. I think I'm replying to the right message yet. Oh wait. Oh shoot. No, I replied to the wrong one. Oh no. Uh, Jody, I don't have any thoughts on floor systems cooling yet. The solid state cooling. I haven't been hands on yet, but hopefully soon. I think we're in touch with them. Asa asks, uh, last year I had asked about the possibility of the lab developing a DAW benchmark, a, um, uh, digital audio workstation benchmark. You said it'll happen likely. Is it still in the works? It will happen. I don't know that I would say it is in the works, but it is absolutely something that we want to do. It just hasn't been the highest priority. And, you know, that's the thing, right? Is something that is like always B tier never gets done. And I don't know, I don't know how we get past that on this one because you're not the first to request it and you won't be the last. 
And Anonymous asks, what technology is in its relative infancy, like RISC-V or graphene processors or whatever, that you're excited to see in the hands of consumers? AR. I think AR is not even infancy yet. I think it's still in the womb. I'm um, so sketched for AR. I'm, All I'm the conversation around AR right now is saturation of ads. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. Like, that's actually I'm what hoping it is. for useful AR. Yeah. Yeah, well... <laughs> LCD store! <laughs> yeah. Okay, that I don't know. I don't know if I want to be a Subscribe to Floatplane! <laughs> Great. <laughs> and I think that's it for the show today. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> <laughs>